Welcome back on the field for the 2022 season of high school football. It's game time, live on A-Court Media from Charles Bland Stadium in Dexter, Missouri. Tonight's game is sponsored by First State Community Bank. Tonight we have the Sykes and Bulldogs coming to town to face the Dexter Bearcats here. Alongside Matt Tanner, I am Bobby Offer bringing you action live on A-Court Media Networks. And Matt, welcome to week two of the high school football season. Bobby, I appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to be here and helping out you guys tonight. And I really look forward to a competitive game tonight. Last year, the Bulldogs and the Bearcats uh, over in Sykeston. Sykeston snuck by them 13 to seven. I feel like the teams are much improved over last year and I really expect a competitive game. And uh, I, I think it's gonna be a hard fought victory for one of the teams tonight. Yes, yeah, so speaking of last year, so the last time Dexter has won this matchup, was two contests to go. They lost last year. They lost the previous meeting in 2020 by the score of 28 to 21. They won back in 2017, so a three-year skip. They won that back in 17, 12 to nothing, and they will look to avenge that here tonight. But uh, Matt, they have got a Sykeston team who is hungry. Both teams looking for their first victory. Only one will walk out here tonight with that, but you're a Sykes and the guy. You call a lot of those games over there. Matt, take us a little bit of through, little bit through of what this Sykes and team is made up of. Well, we've got um, a senior quarterback. Joseph Heckemeyer has played three, maybe I'm trying to remember his freshman year. I think he even played some then. So he's going to have some experience at least behind him. Um, he's got a pretty good receiving core. He's got Dontrez Williams, who is a dynamic athlete. He's 6'3", 6'4". Uh, again, super athletic, can go up and get it. If he throws it up and if it's anywhere near him, he's going to go get it. We've got a uh, receiver on the other side, Connor Wallace. And then we've got a running back uh, that's going to be able to hopefully find some gaps tonight and you know pick up some yards and kind of balance out the offense. But if it's any indication last week, Sykeson threw it a lot, which has not been our M.O., but this is a uh, second-year coach, uh, Treston Pulley, who – when he played at Sykeston back, he graduated in 2011. He was an all-state player, and, I mean, he was a stud. And so he's doing things the right way. He's a winner. We're proud to have him, and he's he, he's taking his time and doing it the right way, trying to rebuild our program back. Yep. And and as for Dexter, last week fell to Scott City. Dexter jumped out to a 14-0 lead, only surrendered that, dropping that one 43-21. But when you look for play, you start to look at it as how your quarterback performs. Dexter's got a sophomore quarterback, number 17, Jackson Howard. He was very poised last weekend, uh, threw the ball well, threw for 182 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, one of the interceptions late in the game, trying to force something to happen. So, you know, you, you kind of push that one away. Is it, The game was well in hand at that point. Mm -hmm. But the play of Howard, the thing that impressed me the most, he is a sophomore and he worked through progressions well. So he checked off read one to read two to read three. As a sophomore, that's highly important and impressive. Right. Um, the other guy for Dexter you see walking out on the field now, number 12, Caden Kennedy. They never could get him started in the running game. I think Dexter needs to find ways tonight to get Kennedy involved. He is the most important player on that football for them on the offense, and he was non-existent last week. Look for them to get him involved. He'll be involved early. And the last kid I want to talk about is number 32, and that's my son, Nolan Alford. And I want to address that for a reason. He'd had a nice run, 83-yard touchdown last weekend. Folks, I want to tell you, first and foremost, I am a father. Second, Absolutely. Second, I am a fan. But third, I am a broadcaster, and I will try in every way to keep my announcing professional on that, but realize <laughs> there may be a moment in the broadcast where I become a father or a fan. It's okay. So if it does, please excuse me, folks at home, but – uh, understand the situation I'm in. I don't get to watch <laughs> just my son and play here. I'm doing my best to uh, bring you the best coverage possible. Um, you know, a couple other things real quick about this Dexter team. Coach Chad Jamerson come into this situation, you know, Dexter's coaching search was really tough this yeah. past season. Yeah. He has come in and done nothing but brought energy to these kids. Yep. Um, you could see it all summer long on social media and Facebook. These kids are posing, showing off muscles. He made it fun and cool to That's be a important. Dexter Bearcat. So for those listening, thinking about football in the future, I'm telling you right now, I, I hear it in my house all the time, these kids absolutely love this coach. So, uh, Matt. That's important. Matt, real quick, we'll go the coin flip here. We've got yep. that. Dexter has number 12, Caden Kennedy, a senior. Number three, that is uh, Mr. Sailors. 
excuse me on the first name there. I just forgot it. Andrew Sailors, number 71. That looks like Colin Simpkins and number 11, Logan Josephate, seniors for those. Uh, Matt, do you have the guys out there for Sykeston? Yeah, number 10. I'll, he's really on one I can see. He's, of course, he's the tallest kid. That's Joseph Heckemeyer. He's, uh, I think, Camden Copeland's 58. Is the other one three? That's Caden Craig, I guess. And I missed the other one. I missed the other number. I can't see it from, from our vantage point. But um, those kids are leaders of the team. It's interesting you talked about. That's what Coach Pulley's done for Sykeston. He's brought a lot of energy. He's started, uh, he's picked up, he started some, helped start some youth leagues, even in uh, even some of the grade schools. And so he's really getting these kids bought in early, which is a, a big thing. And, and yes, as Bobby said, I'm a Sykeston homer, but I will do my best. I will not talk bad about a kid. I assure you that regardless if it's Bobby's kid or anybody's kids, first off, these are high school students. They're playing a game they love. I will not talk bad about them, but I will do my best to keep my, <laughs> my Bulldog homer in check. No promises, but I'll do my best. Real quickly before we get started, the um, from personal checking to home and auto loans to debit cards and personal savings accounts, First State Community Bank provides all resources to Missouri communities near you. We are about set to go here. Looks like Dexter will receive. They'll have Caden Kennedy, number 12, back deep, along with Jackson Ground, number 22. And we will see who tees that, tees that up for Sykeston. Real quick, I want to get a copy of the officials for tonight's game. That is Rick Williams, who has 43 years of experience calling football wow. games. Don Backfish with 32 years. Jimmy Smith with 25. Nate Watkins with five years, and Brian Cato with 11 years of refereeing, so a lot of experience on this field. Real quick, Matt, let's touch on refereeing while we have a chance. Mm -hmm. as, as we have the invocation here, but what we want to touch on is there's a shortage in referees in this area. Big time. Guys, we need, we need some, some men to step up right here, or ladies. I mean, there's ladies in, right. entering that field now. We don't care. Mm -hmm. We need people to step up. I'm, I'm in the booth, so I'm not going to do it, and I'm not very good at it. I'll, I'll stick to my booth job. But we <laughs> I can need see a lot some, better from here than on the field, right? And I call it a lot better from here. That's right. <laughs> but we desperately need some people. Uh, I'm not sure who does the football, but I would guarantee you if you got in touch with Lloyd Rice, Lloyd Rice. Yep, he will he's point the guy. you in the right direction, folks. I beg you to consider it. If you have th ever thought about it, yep. please get involved. We have a shortage. We only have 14 teams, I believe, and 17 games per weekend, so we're having to move games around. In right. The Hill every just every team in. has had to take a Thursday or Saturday game to yeah. to accommodate the officiating. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's a it's a need, and it's not just here; it is all across the country. Looks like Connor Wallace is going to kick off for Sykeston. We are about ready to go here on Neon Night in Dexter, Missouri. Good crowd, really good crowd. And the home opener for Dexter is underway. Short kick. That will be taken by R.J. Farmer. He's got it around the 20. Matt, I thought I saw a fair catch right there, Wade. That was, you know what, that was interesting. I, I, I saw the same thing. I didn't, uh, and it didn't dawn on me until you said that. But he, evidently, maybe he was just waving somebody off. And they didn't, of course, the officials didn't call it because that would have been, would have been a penalty, right, to, uh, to call it and then run it back. So, Well, yes, and the official needs to blow that dead right, immediately. From right, absolutely, but absolutely. That one hand went up above the air and waved, so yeah, there yeah. it is. Here is the sophomore quarterback, as we talked about, number 17, Jackson Howard. He will start pistol formation. Kennedy behind him. We've got the uh, twin backs for Dexter. Is, that's offered in motion. Hand goes to Kennedy near side, taken down for a gain. Nolan off for 32, Logan Joseph Payton, number 11, as the wing backs for Dexter, and looks like number 22, Jackson Graham, your wide out. On the way over, some of the guys I came over with said Coach Jamerson had been running like a double wing, double tight, so I didn't really know what to expect when I saw Dexter tonight. So looks like they're going into the some sort of spread offense, which is kind of the, the thing to do these days. And Sykeson will have to wrap up and tackle much better than they did last week. Dexter this season has a ton of kids who can run it very, very well with speed. Give again to Kennedy, as we noted, he would run it. Looks like number 64 involved in that tackle. That is Brody Young. Sexton did a good job of just kind of throwing in some congestion, getting in the, in the gaps, and uh, really just kind of fouling up that play. Of course, this is big for Sykeston, obviously, to – they can come out and get a three and out on the first possession, get their offense on the field. 
That will really do wonders for them because last week they – tell you what, Hillsborough is a talented football team, and they're going to give Cape Central all they want to tonight. Ball's at the 36. It's third and four for Dexter. Howard's still on the gun. Here comes the play. Offered comes near side, looks to cut it up. He does. He's going to have first down yardage for Dexter. Kind of run the old jet sweep this way. Picked up enough yardage. Good play, good tackle, but good blocking too. Same play that gave him the 83-yard touchdown. Is that what he broke it on last week? Yeah, sure was. Yep. And noted on that play, uh, I mentioned on my social media page uh, on Facebook that Peyton Hartline and Peyton Gerald blew their guys out of the play. While also number 25, Logan Pullum, he took his man 15 yards downfield and wow. pancaked him, and that wow. opens up huge holes. Absolutely. You'll see a lot of this tonight for Dexter. They call for the play, look at it, look to uh, the sideline again to get another play called in after they look at the defense. Here is Farmer. He is up the middle. No gain on the play. Yeah, Saxon had good surge there on their defensive line. They got in there early. That it looks like Trayvon Dukes on the tackle for Saxon, number 25. He is a physical specimen of a kid, too, I can tell you. He plays basketball. He is a, he's a big body. Strong kid. Second nine for Dexter Ball sits at the 41 and a half. Here it is. Howard looks left, throws it. He had a man and couldn't hang on to it. A lot of traffic right there. Intended for Jackson Graham. Broken up, looks like by number 11, I believe. Connor Wallace. Connor Wallace. Yeah. That was a, well, that was a tough pass. It looked like that window was small. Soxton was on it. That would have been a tough play. It was a, Ooh, that was a good pass. It was just a tough catch, right, some traffic. Well, Matt, we talked about working through the progressions, and mm -hmm. he stared his receiver down. It's he did. It very easy for yeah, Sykes to right. react. It, yeah, exactly. That's and, ex and especially for the safety, he's got to look him off. Got to look him off, no doubt. Dexter checks the wristbands. They are back ready to go. That is Lee Michael McDonald in motion. Howard throws a deep Hit, ball there. He's he... got Graham, and it is caught. Wow. Graham's down to the 20, now to the 10. Give him six touchdown, Dexter, if it stands. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened. To, they hit the quarterback right after he released it. I don't know if that's going to be defensive or offensive pass interference. I couldn't see it. Looks like we're already bringing the football back. I think they may call this a push off. No, they're going to call that uh, yardage. Oh. Dexter declines. That's oh. against the defense. I, I'm surprised. He confused me walking it I back, did Matt. Too. So they hold, uh, they, exactly. They were walking back this way like it was going to be an offensive pass interference. So, Matt, I want to go back to week one again. The second touchdown pass, Dexter threw the second touchdown of the game. That pass happened to Jackson Howard, to Jackson Graham. So, Howard looking very good on the deep balls early on this season. Hey, what? That's a good play. That's a good pass. DeMint boots that through. Dexter up 7-0. 9.05 to go on the clock. Folks, we're going to take a 30-second break. We'll be back here on the A-Corp Media Networks. Growing cotton in the Mid-South is hard work. As a farmer, you make tough decisions every day. Choosing a cotton variety shouldn't be one of them. Next-gen brand varieties from Americot are bred specifically for cotton growers like you. We're 100% independent and farmer-owned. Plant cotton that works as hard as you do. AmeriCut. All we do is cotton all the time. We are back here in Dexter, Missouri. On the board quickly, the Bearcats. Successful drive there. I believe that started around the 25, so they're up 7-0 in this one. And Sykes now has got to look to rebound, and they've got the quarterback to do it. Probably right now, Matt, I would say the best arm in the southeast Missouri region. He, he really has a good arm. If he gets some time, he's got a couple of targets he can throw to. Of course, interestingly, I don't see Don Trez out there. Uh, the two guys back are Keon Atkins and Isaiah Jimerson Patterson. Um, not sure where Don Trez is. Maybe, oh, you know what? I'm looking straight across. He's in pants. He's not playing tonight. So not sure what happened there. If, if we get a report, we will pass that along. Uh, throughout the night, Matt will try to keep us updated of other games going on in the area. Right. Looks like a walk-off on the – there's a walk-off on the penalty. And, you know, we saw this last week where they walked that off to the far side of that. I think this penalty is actually supposed to be back to the other 45 because this happened last weekend. They walked it up to the 45 then walked us back to the opposite end or actually they walked Scott City back. 
was the penalty, was that on the pass interference? I, I would think you can't call that because Dexter declined. It's got to be something on the touchdown we missed or the extra point there. Here is the kick from DeMint. It's in the air. It's deep and through the back of the end yeah. zone as DeMint just shows off the leg. I, I, I guess I missed that penalty because I'm like you. I thought that he, that he uh, declined that. Hmm. Interesting. There was something there that we missed. I was in too big of a hurry to get our sponsors back on the <laughs> air, I suppose. Looking through the scores, and I don't see anybody else that's got a score yet. We'll go over some of the games that our other teams are playing. Kelly and Malden, Popper Bluff, Valley View, East Prairie and New Madrid, Atai and Portageville, and Charleston and Chaffee are just a few, and I, there's no score in those games right now. Looks like Heckemeyer will start in the gun. He's got a five-wide set now. Dexter will be in a three-man front. No safety help deep. That's Here is Heckemeyer. Deep ball already thrown Ooh. and uncatchable. And yeah, they, that, he, that's not a good flag. That's no, not a catchable No, football. it was not. I, but in high school, do they have that, that uh, where they put their hand behind their head, where they call uncatchable? I know they do in college and NFL. But, no, I agree with you. I don't disagree with you on the flag. I just don't know if they have that rule in high school. Regardless, their call, not ours, Matt, so they'll march it up <laughs> to uh, 15 yards on the play. And, and I guess, you know, it happened so far back. They're oh. saying you can't even tell if the kid had a chance to get right, to the football right, maybe. Right, Because yeah, he did do early. it early. It was very early in the play. So, real quickly, you saw I said no safety help. They tried to go straight over the top mm -hmm. of Dexter first play. Mm -hmm. There's a blitz from Dexter coming in. Picked up there. That is a couple Keodrick's guys from the play. Rod. Wow. Really good run there. Logan Joseph Pate made an initial contact after I believe Colin Simpkins may have had his hands on him. Keodrick. One thing Dexter worked on this week, they're looking to put some pressure on Heckemeyer. I, yeah. I noticed watching film at home that when you put pressure on him, he gets a little erratic sometimes, mm -hmm. wants to mm -hmm. get rid of it in a hurry and, you know, overshoots his man some. So yep. possibilities for interceptions for Dexter, they're thinking there. Right. Last week, uh, even though he faced a really, really good Hillsborough team, I thought he made some good decisions, kind of under duress, flushed him out of the pocket, and he you know, threw some away just to, as they say, to live another down. Heckemeyer now the guy in a pistol. Here is the hand, comes near side. He has missed one right there, and Dexter trips him up. That is number 15, Ryder Williams. Dexter's wanting that call, but they're going to say yeah. he is down on the play. Yeah, I think once a – once he hits the ground, and that, the ball caused the, pen, the uh, excuse me the fumble. I think possession's over. I believe is is that number 16 the running back there for Sykeston? Uh, I think that was Keodrick's rod number 33. 33, okay, I missed. Yes, number 33. Sykeston has it first and ten now. And Sykeston will go with a pretty quick tempo, even though they do huddle. So. I don't remember last week us getting close to any play clocks or anything, but evidently now we're getting close. Here's a run again up the middle. Dexter covers that well. So Matt Dexter last weekend, they struggled to cover the run. In the four-man front, they got gashed up the middle. They went to the three-man front, and they gashed them on the edge. They gave up 343 yards on the ground last weekend. They've got to stop that because Sykeston knows it, and they're right. going to attack them every way they can. Right. Interestingly, though, Joseph can. He's 6'3". He's not... Uh, what I would call a speedster, he's plenty fast, but he will pull that thing and he'll he'll run a he'll pull that as you know like a zone read and he'll run that some. Well, I've said again, Heckemeyer rolls right, throws it on the run and incomplete over his man. Again, you know he had some pressure come from behind. I'm he not did. sure if he saw it. Yep. But he's moving, throwing, and trying to find that target overshoots. Yeah, that's Marcus Sanders. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty tough throw, even though you are rolling out to your strong side to your arm side. That's a, that's a tough play. And, and last year, I seem to like him better as a pocket passer. Mm -hmm. right? I He's, think he can set in there, yeah. and if he steps up, let him have a chance to set his feet is, is. my immediate thoughts on him. Agreed. No, that's, I would say that's, his, that's where, he, where he shines. But that looked like a design roll out there. Five wide set now for Sykeston. Dexter showing blitz. Bring it. Hackemeyer keeps it himself. He's going to get about eight on a play, it looks like. Yeah. That looked like the, just a design quarterback draw there. Well, real quick, you can see, and, and I wasn't happy with a lot of the facets of Dexter's defense last year. Last weekend, I thought the D-backs did fairly well, but after that, linebackers have to sit and identify that they dropped. 
And right. you've got to come up and fill a gap there. Right. I, I didn't see a whole lot of that last weekend. And, again, this weekend, you know, they dropped immediately. They've got to fill a hole there. Of course, the middle linebacker was blitzing. So right. Yeah, I was just going to say it looked like a straight run blitz when he came. He was in the backfield real early. Fourth and three here. This could be a big play. I mean, even though it's early, give Dexter a good field position if we don't pick this up. Here it comes. Fake handoff. Rose Hackemeyer with the ball is going to get the yeah. first down. He's a, uh, he's a capable runner. He's not, he's probably not going to break anything for long yardages, but he's he's plenty has enough ability to do something just like that. We're early going so far for Sykeson. Sykeson, it's Heckemeyer, and he is doing the job with the legs, not the arm. Mm -hmm. Matt, i got to believe that's going to change though at some point in this game. They're, it, they're definitely, again, we're just one game in. But, uh, what have we got here? Look, looks like we're going to get a timeout time on the field. I believe a water break here at the 6.09 mark. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here on the A-Corp Media Networks. If more is not on the back of your vehicle, you pay too much. Welcome back. It is 7 nothing Dexter, 6.09 left in the first as Sykeston, right before the water break, just got their uh, fourth down conversion. So it's first and 10 sec Sykeston now, double backs. It's going to go to a hand of number 33 there. He cuts it outside, and he's tripped up after about a six-yard game. That is number 33 again, Keodric Sherrod. Sherrod. Mm -hmm. He is a good downhill runner. You can see he had, looked like our line had some good push up front. Gave him a lane to go, and he can he can take it uh, he can take the distance if he gets out there. Quick uh, score update: We've got uh, Park Hills the Central uh, seven nothing in the first quarter over Carothersville. That's the only score that I see has been updated besides ours, obviously. Looks like that is number 15, Ryder Williams, limping off the field. We'll see what that is and see if he's able to return later on. Big big guy to lose right there for Dyke, or Dexter. Matter of fact, you know, one of the comments my son had made about Ryder Williams, he said he's the smartest kid on the football field. He knows every detail of every play. Yep. That's a big guy to lose right now for uh, Dexter. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't – those kids like that, those are the ones you got to have out there. Back to Sherrard again. He's got it first down and more. He is cutting that to the far side and finally knocked out there. Logan Joseph paid big hit. And that's hard to bring down. He's a 210-pound junior. He's, he's, he's a, a big, big boy. kid. Yeah, he's a big kid. You're not going to be able to tackle him up high. So Dexter now, that was Andrew Saylor's end of the game as a safety for Ryder Williams. I remember, I don't, it's been several years ago, Bobby, and you were probably at the game, but uh, Dexter, I think it was the last year before we had that three-year break, Dexter beat Sykeston on a hook and ladder. Do you remember that? Yes, they, I do. Oh, that, my gosh, they could have scored from three miles out that night. Run again. Matter of fact, that was, I believe, 2015. That's that was right. my oldest daughter, Shelby Gathings, who is actually listening in Oklahoma tonight. Ah, hey, Her Shelby. senior year, Coach Peden was the coach that year yep. for Dexter. Yep. Hook and ladder, and that oh. became the theme of the year for the oh, Bearcats. Oh, my gosh. They, they faked everybody out. That was a great call. Glad to have Shelby and Dawson. I know they are yeah. back uh, home rooting for Nolan and the Bearcats tonight along with us. Yep, I've got a bunch of folks. i got... Uh, our school superintendent, she just texted me. She was trying to get the link to work. I think we got it now, Shannon Hollifield. Parker Long, ex-basketball player, star for Sykeston, playing college basketball over in Springfield. Or, excuse me, in Joplin at uh, Missouri Southern, I think is what it's called. Sykeston's ball controlled so far. Up the middle there, nice gain and more. That is number 21. That is Tres Clark for Sykeston with the carry. Yes. Again, Dexter having problems up front and at yeah. the linebacker spot yeah. stopping the run game. At, at this point, though, we might have ourselves a shootout. I'm, 
I'm not uh, opposed to that, are you? Well, you know, it's always fun to score, call a high-scoring game, I tell you, man. It, it's a lot better than a low-scoring. I agree. I totally agree. And for the viewers at home, it keeps you glued to your uh, Exactly, TV. exactly. They don't want to sit here and listen to us. Eckermeyer has his team up first and 10. Ball's on the 11, so he can get a first down without a touchdown. He'll row right, pitches it out to Clark again, cuts it back up to the middle, and he is down to about the five, we're going to call it, as Dexter wraps him up there, so a six-yard gain. And with the, the play before this, that moves Sykeston into the young real estate red zone. That's prime real estate for scoring for all your real estate needs. See Young. I got a sco quick score update, Bobby. Uh, Charleston is up 6-0 over Chaffee, and I think that game is at Chaffee, thanks to Rod Anderson for the hookup for the score. So here we go, Sykeston, second and six. Now they are trying to find Pater early in this game. Dexter up 7-0. Double wing back, that is Sherrod with the ball. He's going to cut it up the middle, be wrapped up at about the three-yard line. Looks like Sykeston Bobby can still pick up a first down without scoring. And there are, what, maybe a yard short to uh, – Trying to look at the stick here. Yeah, about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Ball is on the three. They need to get to the one for the first down. Heckemeyer under center tries to sneak it. It is not going very far. They're going to – he keeps pushing. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't blow that dead a little earlier. Looks like they've got him down at the one-yard line, so it looks like first down looks maybe. Like it's hard to I've tell. Seen, seen yeah, looks like a first down for sure. Yeah, I have not that. seen the officials wave it down, so it's going to be – Looks like third and very short. The officials are going to call oh. a timeout and measure this. Ah. A fourth down. You know, and I'm surprised on a play call there. You've got a back that's just two backs just kinda, tearing them yeah, up. Yeah, just They're, gashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get behind those big boys and let it go. I agree. I agree. N not to question Coach Pulley because he knows no, his team. No, absolutely. I, ju I, I just going to say that's why I say all the time up here. I'm certainly not questioning these coaches. They know their kids better than I do, know the plays a whole lot better. Got a bunch of folks starting to text me now. I started mentioning, oh, it looks like they're going to come up a hair short. Jim Gadbury is probably watching from, uh, um, I don't know if he's in Sykeston. He may be in Ohio. And, oh, Chris Hodgkiss, the, the voice of the Bulldogs, is watching on their way to Starkville. His daughter is in school in uh, Mississippi State, and they're watching on the way down. Matt, that thing is going to be very, very close, and it is going to be. I've looks seen those like signals. I think it's fourth down. It is fourth down. Yeah, they've still got it. It's so the nose of a and, football. Fourth and maybe a half of an inch right here. It, it was very, very close on the call. I'm going to guess they're going to sneak it again, but I'm certainly no prognosticator, but I would see it just seemed to. Dexter sneaking oh, in and fumble on the play. It. I'm well, not sure where that is. They've got him Sykes marked well short at the one. What are they? So no touchdown. Looks like Dexter's cheering on the sidelines. I well, have not, not seen an official. They're nope, saying Sykes, Sykeston's Sykeston got a first football. down. I don't Sykeston football. That was interesting. I'm not sure what they were calling. Oh, it's first down. Okay. So also, Sykeston recovered the fumble there. Yeah, yeah. Also, like to give a shout out to Kim Heckemeyer, uh, Joe's mom, who is recovering from COVID. And so I hope she's doing well, Kim. I hope you're, I know you're rooting on your baby boy. So. Hope you're having a good time and healing and getting better quickly. Sykeston from the one, trying to draw Dexter off. Here is Sherrod. He takes it up the middle. Touchdown, Sykeston. Well, they fought all the way down the field, Matt, and they finally get in with 209. They took over four minutes off the clock right there on that drive for Sykeston. Wow. That's, again, last week we had some really good drives. Uh, ended up only, we, were, we lost 49-14, but, Ball control actually last week was not that. But, yeah, I, I agree. That took a lot of time off the clock there. Matter of fact, I, I think they took about maybe seven minutes. I think it was 9.05 when we went to break. So, seven-minute drive Holy basically crap. by Sykeston. Yeah. yeah Very that's, impressive. That's definitely a ball control. And they did it without completing a pass. Here's the extra point. That is up and good. So, that will take us to a quick break. It's tied here in Dexter at seven. Does your business need uh, literally anything? When we founded CNS Cleaning Supply, our goal was simple 
Become a one-stop shop for anything and everything your operation might want. From car care to condiments, mops to markers, soaps to staplers, and everything in between. Which is a lot. CNS has got you covered. Give Delane Beck with a call at 573-217-0104. Or visit cscleaningsupply.com to get set up with, well, literally everything. Tell them Delane sent you. Back in Dexter, Missouri, uh, Matt, want to say a big hello to my broadcast buddy, Jim Riker. Could not be here tonight, oh, but uh, all of last season, at the end of the football season, he broadcast a game with me, and I looked at him, and I said, Jim, you need to get your butt up here in this broadcast booth. <laughs> and all of basketball season, we yeah. uh, broadcast together, and it yeah. was great. Enjoyed it. Um, the, the highest of highest professionals he can be Absolutely. at his job. And yes. can't wait to get him back up here in the booth. Hey, get somebody up here who knows what they're doing. <laughs> I t I, when Luke got a hold of me, I thought, man, they have must texted everybody in his phone. And it, I was the last guy. Well, we, we went for experience, Matt. <laughs> Matt is part of the uh, broadcast uh, system over at Sykes and as they do their home games there mm -hmm. and uh, have that on there for folks. and. He's part of the A-Court media crew tonight. Here we go. That is off and downfield. That is Kennedy. Takes it near the out-of-bounds line. Up past the 20 now. Now mm. near the 29-yard oh, line. So, Kennedy, he is slow to get up. Looks like Farmer will have to check in for him and get into the backfield. But Kennedy trying to just crawl off the field right now. Got another score real quick, Bobby. Uh, Portageville up 14-0 on Haytai. That's, uh, tell you what, that Portageville bunch, best I can tell, so I'm like, they're going to be pretty good. Trying to get a look at Kennedy. I'm not sure if he's cramped. That's, see, it, it looks that's like what an ankle. Looks, oh, well. Looks like she's feeling yeah, around the foot and the ankle. We'll right. try to keep that one up. So that's two for Dexter now. That is a starting linebacker and your starting running back. Here is Farmer up the middle. Nice gain on first. He'll pick up maybe... We'll call it two right there. Tell you what, I hate to see that for any kid. They're out here, you know, they've practiced in the heat and done all these things that their coaches have done and lifted all off season. And, you know, I hate to see a kid get hurt. I was hoping it was just a cramp. I hope he, hopefully he's good and gets back in there. So here's some of the things you'll see from Dexter tonight. First round, you had offered Joseph Payton Kennedy in, and I believe Jackson Graham. Now you have McDonald, you have Quavez, still Graham and Farmer in the background. Dexter's very deep at their skills positions that's, this year. That's a that's a big asset to you guys, that's for sure. Especially there's Quavez now. He's taking that far side. He's going to cut it back up field at the right time and stood up now Sykes. after maybe a three two-yard gain. Sykes did a good job on that one, kind of stringing it out and setting that edge, and he turned back and kind of get into the traffic and did a – just got stood up, like you said, and tackled. So Dexter now sits at a – that's no gain. Very good with Sykes, and I thought he had a short game there. I did it, too. It is third and six. We got a one-yard gain. Under a minute now left in the first. Howard looks in to get his play. Comes back, gets it set. Again, Howard's been very comfortable. Didn't get hit really last weekend at all or not. Uh, Dexter, very good pass protection. Here he is again. That throw was outside uh -oh. and going to be picked off there. And that is number two for Sykeston. Isaiah Jimerson Patterson. Patterson, big play there in the turnover. And Sykeston's going to get the penalty for excessive celebration. So we'll get that ah, one marked off. But that's a big play on the right side of the 50 now. Agreed. Well. It's going to take them back to the other side of the 50. Yeah, that was. You got to. I understand. Uh, listen. Listen. Make a big play, you want to celebrate, but there, there's a point when you, I guess. For, for me, Matt, I don't like to take the, the fun out of the game no. as long as it's not something vulgar not or taunting. toward a player. Right, taunting. right, right, right. I agree. I, I'm I, with I, you. I don't mind the joy of it for the kids. But I'm with you. I guess they shut it off early to keep them from doing too right, much and that right. going into a problem. So. Just exactly. The, listen, you went over these guys earlier with their years of experience. I'm going to go with them, as I say, every time. They're, yes. they're there. They're, you know, feet from the action, and we're – not very far, but we're certainly a lot further away than they are. Yeah, and, and that's a personal preference for me because I love to see the kids. I agree. No, the listen, game I'm with you 100%. I'm with you too. But you also have to keep it consistent, and these guys have done it yep. so far. Yep. That yep. Dexter back in that three man front. Heckemeyer has his five wide. Here they go. Dexter show blitz. Didn't bring it. Now up the middle is a couple. That throw is short and incomplete. So delayed blitz from Levi to Mint there for Dexter. Heckemeyer had to throw that off the back foot. Yeah, that's that, of course, that's when any quarterback gets in trouble throwing off their back foot. 
they're going to throw the ball, you know, short, long, high, whatever. But uh, he was under duress for sure. Interestingly, I was reading or we were doing something last week. We were talking about the rule change in high school this year. Now if the quarterback's out of the, the tackle box, as they call it, they can throw it away as long as it gets to the line of scrimmage. They've sort of brought that back. So that gets rid of some of those um, – Intentional grounding calls. Five wide again. Here comes Offord uh -oh. on a blitz. He's got a clean look at him, and he is going to take him down. Big sack, Nolan Offord at the 20. I wonder whose kid that was. That was a good play. You've got to hold on to the football <laughs> on that play, and it slipped right out of Heckemeyer's hands, and that is a tremendous loss. Matt, now Dexter can sit here. That will take us to the second quarter. Dexter's going to be able to sit there in a – third and forever, and right. now they're just going to play prevent defense on absolutely, this. Absolutely, absolutely. That that ball, it was a bad snap. It was rolling on the ground. Joseph probably should have just fallen on it. I get it. He was trying to make a play out of it, but didn't work. That's it's like we're, what, we're at the Matt, end of the Matt, quarter. Matt, we're at the end of the quarter, yes, so take us to the break here. We, we are going 7-7 tie ball game here in Dexter. Well, back in the sun is setting here in Dexter and getting close to being gone, but this one's far from over. 7-7 ball game. Right before the break, Sykeston mishandled a snap. Offered tackled him about the 20-yard line, I believe is where that ball rests, right in front of it. That sets up a third and has to be Heckenmeyer on the pass here. It is 29 yards to go. Yeah, certainly, or Sykeston could just be content to run it and punt it and uh, try to pin uh, Dexter back a little bit. A couple of quick scores here, Bobby. Um, for, uh, Jackson is at Francis Howell in St. Louis. Uh, Jackson's down 14-7. to seven. That's been a while since you've seen Jackson lose two, but they played two pretty good teams. Jackson was up at halftime, I believe, 24-6 to six maybe yeah, they last lost weekend in and overtime. lost 34-41, yeah. I believe, in overtime. And uh, Hillsborough was up 15 to nothing on Cape Central. That's uh, Hillsborough team is going to be a team to watch out. I know they're kind of out of our area, so to speak, but they're a good team. Dexter, watch at the top of the screen here. The outside linebacker offered. Look for him possibly to blitz on this play in a passing situation. He does. Here he comes. Run is near side. That is going to be taken down there. Nice Dexter stops him short. There. That is number 10, Levi DeMint on the yeah, tackle. Was, boy, he pursued that from the backside and didn't get anything out of that. That was a nice play. Looking around for Dexter players, number 15 or number 12, that would be Kennedy and um, – well, let's see. There, there's Ryder Williams. He's back on the field. That's 15. I do not see Kennedy trying to identify. Uh, he's straight down in front of us here. Looks oh. like he's probably going to try to come back. Maybe they're feeling around with the ankle. Yeah, I saw him limping a while ago, kind of wincing. I hope, I sure hope he can come back. That's a, I I'm, don't like to see that. I'm thinking he'll get some tape and try to return to this right. game if possible. Here is a snap. Going to get the kick away. It is kick. a decent kick there. Cuavez takes it at his own 41. So that's going for Dexter will start. Big play for Dexter right there. So the turnover and then Dexter turns it over on the interception. But they get the big sack there on the fumble. So both teams, mistakes have cost them. But boy, when they're right, they've been right so far in the game. Absolutely. Dexter, let's see who they'll have. That's going to be Farmer in the backfield. Now, again, another wideout we have not called. That is Andrew Saylor's number three at the bottom of the screen here. Looks like McDonald will be to the top and offered your slot receiver. Pullum is a kid, you know, also the tight end. Logan Pullum, you can't lose him. He had a couple really nice plays to him last week for, I believe, two catches downfield. Seam routes. Here's offered in motion, fake handoff. That goes to Farmer up the middle. He makes one miss and back to the line of scrimmage. Luke Gadbury there for the tackle. Really nice play with just maybe give him a yard on that, I would guess. That's a really nice play out of that linebacker position coming up and sniffing that out. That's a really nice spot because that linebacker got there quick. He did. He did, and it he was about the only one that could have made that tackle, and he's got probably another seven or eight yards. And, and very good read because Alford went in motion to the far side right, there. So right. he doesn't slide. He sits, reads that it's not to him, and he's 
crashes down on the running back very well. Right. Here's Howard. He takes it. Quick pitch out to Farmer. And it's going to be upfield. Gets a positive yard. Look at him go there now. First down yardage for Dexter. R.J. Farmer. Well, there's the depth we've talked about again. Kennedy out, Farmer in, and he didn't miss a lick. Matter of fact, Farmer, a good game last week for Dexter. That was Ran the really, ball very well. Yeah, that was a nice play. They had a couple kickout blocks on the end, were able to uh, seal their guys, and he had a big lane to go through. Dexter now checks the wrist bands, if you will see all night out of them. Well, it's just Sykeston actually is kind of old school. The Joseph Heckemeyer kind of goes over toward the sideline and gets the call. Near side could be wide open with a hand. Here it is, fake to offer, back up the middle to Farmer. He's got probably three on the play, I'd say. You know, right there, I'm looking for offer to get that ball come this side because it was wide open. I, I was just going to say, I, I, I think they're probably biding their time with that, and they'll I, – I, is that a read? Does he do that as a read, or is that a call? Do you know? You know, I don't know, and if I did, I can't say because I'm too close to the program. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. Okay, I'm I, sorry. I can't give away some I'm secrets with you. on the I team understand. if it is or isn't, but I'll, yeah. I'll leave that with the Dexter folks there I on understand. the sideline. But nonetheless, they've got to see upstairs what I'm seeing, the green grass. Oh, and absolutely. You'll have a speedster uh, offered or Joseph Paid Quavez could do that. Here's a pass outside to Graham. He's got it across the 40 now to the 35, inside the 30, and he is down at about the 21-yard line. Jackson Graham again from Howard, the same hookup we had earlier in the yeah, game. That's a just a straight pass. hook route. Yeah, absolutely. That was it's a great play, great pass, great route. And Sykeston was, trying again, trying to tackle high. You don't have to be a big kid for someone that, if they try to tackle you high up around the pads, it's just not going to happen. More depth into the game. That's Quavez and Ryder Williams now checking in. Offered out, and I'm not sure who the other receiver was. Great to see Dexter have this depth playing football out here. Folks, if you're thinking about getting involved in football, come on out. This team would love to have you. Here is Howard. He looks. He rolls right. Nobody open. He's just going to keep it, and he is down about to the original line of scrimmage, I'll say. Yeah, I was going to say, looked like they marked him right about there, maybe a half yard. I can't exactly tell. Uh, again, you know, that is a sophomore quarterback. He didn't force anything no, there. No. He took what was there, no gain, but he didn't turn the football over. Right, that's exactly right. Sometimes you get happy feet, and you want to throw it to get rid of it and try to do something. Just remember, you're, you know, you've got ten other guys out there with you. They're working hard, too. And speaking of the speed, I don't know if the clocks were right. There were some kids clocked at four fives this year maybe Ooh. for Dexter um, this summer. But the ones who were, weren't clocked, there's a deep pass to Graham again. Touchdown, Dexter! Wow. Graham, his second time tonight, the hookup from Howard. It's Jackson to Jackson on that. Dexter again now, 13-7, the Great. deep ball again. Absolutely. They had him. He had uh, Isaiah Jimmer Jimerson Patterson out there on an island by himself. He threw it up. He's a lot bigger. Looks like he's an athletic kid. He just went up and got it. Patterson got lost on the pass. He, mm -hmm. he saw the pass coming, yep. and he turned around. He got his head turned. He turned sure around, did. and that went right over him. Yep. And so, he's not a big kid to begin with, and the Jackson kid looks like he's pretty good size and athletic. Just went up and took it from him. And very good speed, Adam. That's Dement up and good again. Dexter takes the lead. It's 14-7. Folks, give us 30. We've got more to go in this one. If you feel like you never get the time you need with your insurance agent to find the right coverage, it might be time to make a change. Tyler Miller of Flatland Ag Insurance in Clarkton works to make sure, each and every day, that his clients feel they are taken care of. With years of experience in crop insurance in four states, he strives to provide you with the exact coverage you need for your specific situation. For more information, give Tyler a call at 573-276-8044. Here's to another great year. Folks, we're back in Dexter. I apologize. I had to stick my head out the window here to get the call on the touchdown. I'm hoping nobody saw the bald spot on my head. That, that's what I'm hoping for because hey, it would have been the back of the head. That's why they make hats, Bobby. That's why I got one on. Well, they make my head itch, and then, you know, it's, just, it's a tough sell for me, but I'm sure somebody will let me know if it showed the bald spot off. Oh, yeah, it, your buddies watching will absolutely let you know. I guarantee it. If they're like mine. Well, I won't know until I get home and watch the broadcast over again if it's right. showed or not. But right. Nonetheless, here is uh, Dement. He will tee this up for Dexter as they go up now. Howard, again, matches his total already here wow. in the first half of last uh, yeah. weekend. Two touchdown passes. Man, this kid has put in the work this summer. He's lifted. He's been what. there. He's worked, worked, worked. They've worked on him on progressions. 
Heaney looks very comfortable back there throwing a the football right now. And credit that line. Um, oh, absolutely. He's got to have time to throw. That's a deep kick there. That is receiver number 22. Matt, I'll let you call him as he brings it up to the 20. Now uh -oh. past the 20. Uh -oh. He's up to the 30. Got a man to beat there, and DeMint will knock him out. Who was that guy there? It's 22. Keon Atkins for yeah. Sykeston. Yeah, Keon. Uh, Keon. Yes. So for Dexter, really quick, I want to give some credit to a couple of guys there. Peyton Gerald, number 75. Uh, Peyton Hartline, number 66. I want to say that is – I, I need to get that center's name right there and make sure who that is. That is Sebastian Ford, the center. Um, also on there, Colin Simpkins and Caden Lee. Those are the guys who are protection high. Uh, absolutely. I, they don't have their name set enough, nope. so I'm giving nope. credit when the offensive line is there. Totally agree. Matt, I'll let you get the offensive lineman who is carrying the load right now for this running game after this play if you have a chance. All right. Here is Heckemeyer. He's going to hand that off to Sherrod. He's going to dance and be taken down immediately by Dexter, maybe for a yard loss. Yeah, Dexter did a great job there. They got a big-time surge. Hogs up front for Sykes and didn't get it done that time. No, number 68, Hayden Hess. Number 58, Camden Copeland. Trying to see him here. Looks like number 21, that is Tress Clark in the backfield now in a pistol formation. Number 70, Kendall Hinton. Steps up, center. Steps up the side. Here is Clark. He's going to take the hand, and Dexter gets a couple of hands on him. He has taken down on the outside. Could not tell who got his hands on him. That's number 16, Quavez, I believe, maybe. Not exactly what Dexter's not, – not sure what they've done, but it looks like they've made a little bit of a, a change and – well, an adjustment, and they are getting some big-time surge on Sykeson's line here. I didn't see any linemen go out. Jaden Willems checked in. I think they're just pinching down on the run. Yeah, Jaden Willems yeah. checks into the game now. They're going to look for a pass rush. Again, offered at your top side of the line. Look for him. Again, positive blitz on this play. He's going to be coming unguarded. Here he comes. Coming oh. around the back on a sweep. Dexter pursues up well, and it's going to be hit right there, taken down. That is Jackson Graham on the tackle. Ryder Williams assisted, so Dexter's going to make it fourth and now looks like 13. That was uh, that was actually the old Wildcat. I'm not sure what we call it. It may be a, the Bulldog or whatever. That was snapped directly to Luke Gadbury, who is a linebacker on defense, but Joseph didn't get that snap. It went right to Luke. Well, you know, something I'm liking out of Coach Lumica now, the defensive coordinator for Dexter, we don't see Dexter generally blitz. The linebackers sit, they wait, they read, and we play everything at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. He's sending blitzers tonight, and it shows he's trying to put pressure. He did his homework this week right. on uh, Heckemeyer. Right, forcing the action. Yep, I like it. Here is the punter. Matt, I'll let you call his name. Yeah. I don't know it, but Number it is. Number six, Bo Riddle. Riddle, he's got it up. It's really a spiral punt. and let bounce by Quavez, and that's picked up by Sykeston. There's they'll down it at the 23-yard line is what we're going to say. Dexter football, 5.56 left in the second. And right now, Dexter's passing game looks really sharp. The running game is okay enough to uh, pass, but we oh, we got a looks like we got a water break here, Bobby. So we I got think. a water break, Matt. We're going to go to a break ourselves. I'm going to get a drink of water. If not, <laughs> it's mine. We'll be back here on the Eight Court Media Networks. At Focus Bank, we believe in really free checking. What does that mean? Well, opening an account requires no more than $25 with no minimum balance requirements or monthly service charges. You'll also have access to online and mobile banking, online bill pay, direct deposits, mobile deposits, automatic payments, e-statements, a nationwide network of ATMs, and an instant issue debit card, all for free. Your first order of checks is on the house, and you'll also receive a complimentary thank you gift. Come visit us in Sykes and Charleston, Brothersville, or East Prairie. Focus Bank, simple, hassle-free checking that's really free. Back in Dexter, they lead it 14 to 7, about to get the uh, football. Uh, well, no, it's defense. No, it's offense for Dexter, but real quick, Matt, do you have any score updates for us? I do. New Madrid County Central in the second quarter up 20 to nothing. Charleston up 12 to nothing in the second quarter over Chaffee. Still no score or no score reported to Kelly and Malden. Francis Howell still up 14 7 over Jackson. Popper Bluff and Valley View still scoreless. And Scott City and St. Vincent still scoreless. And Donovan and Kennett show scoreless. Revenge game for New Madras. They lost that one, I believe, maybe last year, year before last. I think it was year before. His offered in motion fake hand to Farmer. Gets it upfield for a gain. It's going to be a gain of three. Looks like it's going to be a second seven. You know, New Madras lost it, I believe, the last time they played. They may have been canceled last year by COVID, I believe, possibly the year before. But the last time they played, East Prairie upset them. Yes. 
So yeah, New Madrid uh, is definitely wanting uh, revenge on that game. Yeah, that's a – tell you what, that New Madrid team, they're, they're pretty talented. they got some athletes, and I don't know if all of their kids that play football or play basketball play football, but they got some athletes down there for sure. Several of them. Disappointing loss last weekend as they had tough competition, looking to get mm -hmm. on the uh, winning column this weekend. Mm -hmm. Quave is in motion. Hand again to Farmer. He's going to spin off a tackle upfield. Farmer really does well spinning off tackles. He did. That was a, wasn't was a clean handoff, but he got it and kept it. I noticed uh, he was able to keep control of the ball and, of course, absorb the hit and still pick up positive yards. Not Matter sure. Real quick, I, I don't want to talk about what the injury is, but I have not seen Kennedy come off the table yet over here. They're, no. they're still looking at him. I would think at this point it's going to be hard to get him back in there if yeah. he's still on the table. Yeah, he's he's probably going to have to stretch again and do all those things. They've got I see he's got his shoe off. I I hate it for him. I hope it's Howard had, and there's a flag. I'm <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. To Somebody we got a miscommunication on the snap there. On We're the going snap to call count. the false. Well, you would think the false start would be called before Jackson just holds on the ball and then <laughs> wants to run. Uh, Howard's a sitting duck there at that moment. He says, I've got to run. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get out of the way. That's just called self-preservation is what that's called. The whistles still have a little rust maybe in them this year. They, right. they just didn't blow that well. Got a score real quick. Uh, thanks, Philip. Philip Britt. Kennett's up 19 to nothing on Donovan. Cannon looking for another big season this year. Yeah, they squeaked one out against Haytai, which Haytai was not bad. No, no. High scoring game, and Haytai actually led, I believe, at the half on that game. Here is Howard. He looks, looks, got a guy caught there oh, by nice. number 16, Juan Quavez. And he is up first down yardage for Dexter Holy and Moore. Look at him go to the 40 now, inside to the 30. Wow. Where are they going to mark him? 30 yard line for Quavez at the 31, we'll call it now. Breaks the tackle and big gain. I'm telling you, Matt, I can't speak enough about the speed of Dexter and the depth. Oh, that, for sure. That's a deal there. You know, yep. you're running kids in and out. He's fresh legs, and he's able to show his ability. Absolutely, yeah. A lot. Most kids, just like Sykeston and Dexter, they got kids playing both sides of the ball. And, you know, you, it, it's early. You wouldn't think you'd have a lot of tired legs. But, you know, it's not too hot. But, yeah, there's tired legs. Sykeston had four or five guys there. I sure thought he was down, but he did a great job keeping his legs moving. Great play. Farmer in the backfield now. Here is a man in motion. That's Quavez there. Just had the reception. Quick pass out to Joseph Pate. He's got it. Up the field now. Pass the 30 to the 20-yard line. Dexter, no problem right now moving the football. First down, Bearcats. Oh, that was a great play. They had two, had enough guys on that side, and they were man-on-man -man with the block. And he made one move and picked up enough for a first down. It was a really good play. And actually, that play, Moves the Bearcats into the Young Real Estate Red Zone. That's prime real estate for scoring. For all your real estate needs, see Young. Lots of fine folks at Young Realty there in Dexter. Stepped up and sponsored the Red Zone this year. Dexter threatening again now at the 20-yard line. Here's offered in motion. Hands off goes to Farmer. He's up the field. More positive yards down to... We're going to call him down at the nine, just short of a first down. So it's going to be second one. And right now, the way Dexter is playing, I think they're going to run this thing into the end zone. They won't That's, pass it again. I don't no, I, I wouldn't think so, not being here, not in the red zone. And Sykeson's looks like they're on their heels right now, not able to make a play. And actually, I thought just from our vantage point, kind of looking on the backside of that play, looks like. Going to be a timeout. Didn't see who caught it, but there is a timeout on the field. 3.07 before the half, Dexter's threatening. We'll be back here on the Acorp Media Networks. First Day Bank and Trust is more than just products and services. We're there for you for your first paycheck, buying a home, opening a small business, starting a family, or planning to retire, and everything in between. We're the local bank you know and trust for all of your financial needs. Visit fsbtrust.com or stop by your local First State Bank and Trust to explore all of your financial options. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Well, Dexter is threatening again. It is 14 to 7, and the ball lays at the 11 yard line. Matt, I've learned from my mistake. I am now squatting. Now, I usually stand the whole time in the booth, and I see I've got you standing now. Yeah, right. You started yeah. sitting. I was, I started, right. We're just reversing roles here. I'll be happy to give you this chair if you'd like it. No, uh, I will stand as soon as Dexter does something here. If they get it in, I'll be back standing in just a minute. Quick update. The Cardinals uh, at the bottom of the first are up 2-0 over, 
over the old scroungy cub. So how about that? That's some good news. Headed up to take my mom up to uh, see the Cardinals. She's ah, a big fan, so absolutely. I'll take her up next week to see uh, Yachty and Albert. Here's Alford yeah. on the far side. He's going to try to turn the corner, gets it up, and first down yardage and more as he gets that inside the 10 now on a jet sweep. So for her, you know, 72, and she's a big Cardinals fan. Love so it. wanted to get her there one last time to see Albert, Yachty, Wainwright. So hopefully a good time and a big night for us. You know what? I went up a couple of weeks ago to see the Cardinals and the uh, Rockies on a Thursday afternoon, a getaway game for the Cardinals. And I got to, that's when Albert had that pinch hit grand slam. That was so cool. I loved seeing that. Saw your Facebook post yeah, on that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did you actually call it before you hit it? I did. I was like, he's going to hit a grand slam. Just, I mean, the whole crowd was standing. It was really cool. Here's Farmer up the middle. He has got it and near he's it. He's in, I think. No oh. signal yet. He is down at the half-yard wow. line, maybe the quarter-yard line there. So, Dexter, right now, if I'm Dexter, I'm taking uh, this as slow as can be because yeah. Sexton yeah, they're gonna can run it. It's two, 220, excuse me, under 220 now and counting. Second down, so Dexter will need the touchdown. They cannot get a first down unless Sykeston jumps. That will be uh, – this is a big possession here. I don't – Sykeston's kind of reeling here. Dexter spreading, spreading them out here on this offensive line. And they're probably going to be able to jam this one in. Sykeston right now looks aghast. They, they really do, yeah. Here's Howard, hands that to Farmer. He is Damn. up the middle, and touchdown, Dexter. Dexter. Yeah, they're just on their heels for sure. Three possessions, or four possessions, three, three touchdowns mm -hmm. for Dexter. They are in control. And, Matt, I, I watched the Bearcats last year, but I didn't see the – I have never seen the Bearcat offense fire like it's firing so far this season. Tell you what, their passing game looks good. They're running the ball real well right now. Uh, a couple quick scores here. Portageville's up 22-0 over Haytai. I'll get this. Oh, and that is Ryder Look Williams, two-point conversion to Logan Pullum. Wow. Dexter pulls out the trickery. That they was a bad it. snap. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think it was. Well, the, they'll fake the bad snap sometimes <laughs> and then throw it <laughs> there in. There we go. He was wide open. <laughs> Nonetheless, it makes it 22 to 7 yep. now. Yep. Uh, Dexter still just really rocking with this game. Folks, want to let you know that from personal checking to home and auto loans to debit cards and personal savings account. First State Community Bank provides all resources to Missouri communities near you. Another quick score, uh, New Madrid Central, excuse me, New Madrid Central up 28-0 in the second quarter. Over, oh yeah, East Prairie, sorry. And uh, Charleston's up 18-0 at half over Chaffee. We will be joined here at halftime, I believe, by Dustin Mayer is going to come up and visit with you. Folks, he does a lot of things in this town, so I'm not going to try to tell you what he does. I'm going to let him tell you all <laughs> about it when he gets up. But he will join us here in a few as Dexter has taken control of this game now, 22-7. to Heads up play, Ryder Williams, to get the two-point conversion. Saxon would be well served. It'd be, if they could score here, make it 22-14, and they get the ball at half. So... But they're going to have to change some things on offense for sure. Williams, or, yeah, Ryder Williams, actually a nickname he had years Good ago, and I told kid. him I'd call him this. That's touch back there, Turbo Williams. <laughs> so my, my neighbor across the street coached him when Ryder was in third grade, and I remember him telling the story about him. He said, man, I've got this because I had the team that Chase had the following year. And um, so I had the red team, and he said, man, this one kid I had, he just, man, he'll hit anything. You know, he just he loves to hit. And he nicknamed him Turbo. So the name that Chase Kennedy gave him long ago, I've been calling him Ryder <laughs> some this year, but Ryder was at my house earlier this summer, and I told him I would call him Turbo this year. So <laughs> Turbo Williams, that's where it come from like right the there. Like the Tasmanian Devil. That's right. It, it's amazing how you get nicknames in this uh, oh, yeah. deal sometimes. Hillsboro up now 28-0 over Cape in the second. Sykeston, they are in the gun. They need to move it. They'll bring a double wing back. <laughs> Looks like they're just going to try to run it maybe against Dexter as they have controlled it well there. Still no completions. That is Clark. He runs it far side, taken down by number 88 for Dexter. I want to believe that's uh, Joseph Noel there. That was a... It is Joseph Noel with a tackle. No gain at best. Maybe lost a half yard. And clock's a minute and a half. I'm going to guess Coach Pulley is going to... 
just be content to try to score coming out of halftime. And, and I'm, and I'm going to take you back to Dexter real quick last weekend. <clears throat> Dexter had it 21-21. to 21. They've got the ball to 25. Clock takes under a minute. They fumble the football. Scott City goes up 28-21 yeah. and gets the ball after the half. Right. There's a run far side by Sherrod. Really, I don't know who the your Dexter player was. He shed his block really, really well, made the tackle while taking on the block. That was a really nice play. Third and long. Sykes and Sykeston called interesting. Called so timeout. So Sykeston's going to take it. We're going to stay here real quick because the scenario, Sykeston calls a timeout, 103 on the clock. If Dexter gets a stop here, yeah. Matt, I fully they'll anticipate go, they'll a timeout. Call. Absolutely. They, they've got all three timeouts yeah. left. If they can block a punt, a shank punt, Dexter yep. has a chance to get this back and score again before the half. Totally agree. That was an uh, – I don't know. Maybe they had some personnel issues. I didn't. I didn't notice any. Uh, but again, like we talked about, Coach Pulley knows what he's doing. It's his his team, and uh, that was a surprising timeout. At this point, third and long, you just kind of burn the clock up. And, and Dexter probably would have been content going in there. But now I'm with you. If they stop them or don't pick up a first down, they're going to burn a timeout. I don't blame them. I would too. You're not going to take much time off the clock whether you run it or pass it. Right. If, if I'm selection right here, I'm going to put the ball in my senior quarterback's hands and see if he can make me a play. Right. Make sure it's safe. If not, and we'll punt it away. He's not even in. So or they're going to go wildcat formation here. Looks like Sherrod is the deep man. Here's a snap. That's Little Caden hip. Craig. That's a deep Ours. pass, and it is incomplete. So Sorry, that was... 57.9 seconds left. I believe you're right. That's number three that who passed that. That was Caden Craig. You're correct. Yeah, he threw he threw a touchdown late uh, last week to give us our second touchdown of the game. That's so I'm wondering if now something's going on with uh, Joseph Heckemeyer because yeah. that's a senior quarterback who has got a big arm. Right. Not taking that pass. No, Maybe no. they're trying to run deception on Dexter for the first down. But uh, it's the only thing I could think of. Bo Bo Riddle's back. He's had two really good punts, but, you know, he's going to kick it probably from the, the 10 or so. Bob is back to his own. He's going to back up to about the 43. He'll yeah. look for a return if he can get it. Snap is off and short kick, so yeah. Dexter is going to try to take advantage of it. You called it. And that's going to bounce back. Dexter, look at there. And Dexter see, is sitting at the 43-yard line. That was a, And that was actually an unlucky break. The ball bounced and hit, our, hit the Sykeston player. If he would have moved it, probably picked up another – who knows, 10 or 15 yards by just bouncing uh, toward the Sykeston end zone. That was – got a flag down here. Not sure what's going on. We're going to wait on the flag. It's going to be against Dexter. I'm not sure what they're calling. It's going to be a – no, it's against Sykeston. So, illegal hands in the back, I guess. Illegal block. It's Dexter all three, all three timeouts. timeouts. Yeah, the there. ball now lies at the 34-yard line. Dexter will look to strike again. I, they've had a bunch of success over the top. I'd go right back at it. But again, I don't know Dexter's playbook, but that's where I'd go. So four wide, you've got Pullum right here at the bottom of the screen. He's number 25. Lee Michael McDonald there, the slot receiver to the bottom, number seven. Offered your slot at the top of the screen there, number 32 and 22. Jackson Graham, who has been. Howard's favorite yeah. target tonight. He's caught both, caught two touchdown passes. I'd go right to him. Let's see if Sykeson wants to try to dial up any pressure. Haven't noticed a whole lot of blitzes from Sykeson. No, One or two maybe tonight. They're not showing it, that's for sure. Here's nope. McDonald on a jet sweep. He's going to cut it up. Good yardage there, and he pushes up near the first. He's going to be just short of it. Nine-yard gain, and let's see. Dexter calls a timeout smartly. 40.1 seconds left. Ball yeah. on the 34. We're going to keep it here because this thing may start back really quickly. He's okay. just wanting to stop the clock. Right. Sykeson's having a hard time getting a surge there. They were getting a surge that first two or three possessions, even on the one where they gave up the score early, still getting pretty good surge on that run, and they're not getting up. They're going to call him off the field now so or for a little bit. So off the field. So, and, and I like the design by Dexter. That mm. went to McDonald, who has not had a jet sweep called his way yet this season. Different one. First time. That's not the kid I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Very good no, idea right. by Jamerson. Right, I, mean, that, right. I, I love the play design because you're going to sneak one in on them right now. You're Sykeston. Who is the person on this defense who's fixing to step up and make a play for them? I want to say it's going to have to be Luke Gadbury, number 44. So um, that's, a, that's from the middle linebacker he's spot. He's middle linebacker spot. Camden Copeland's probably going to be on the line. 
Um, he needs to get a surge. If Trayvon Dukes is out there, um, he can get a big surge. But I would look for one of those two to uh, it up. I don't know exactly what we got cooking here. Second short for Dexter. I've got Connor Wallace back in the free safety spot. He is over over to the right. First down yardage. So Dexter gets it there. Clock will stop. 34.8 left. Matt, if they call the timeout, looks like. So timeout, Dexter, real quick. What about the score updates we've got in there? Yeah, area? yeah. Uh, Those are a couple of quick ones that someone just sent to me. Let me update this. Really looking. You mentioned Park Hills earlier. That may be as fine as the team is in the area this year. Park Hills, Jackson. Park uh, Hills looked really good last weekend against Popper Bluff. Bluff did not play very well. Um, I think they ran three quarterbacks in it sometimes. Wow. So I did. I read that where Dexter or Bluff had that. Actually, New Madrid, New Madrid County is up 34 to nothing. Um, Cape, or excuse me, Park Hills. I'm still showing them up 14 to nothing. On New, uh, uh, New Madrid last uh, weekend, 49-14. Right, right, right. And one that surprised me because the program struggled so mightily last year. Roseville seems to have their act together. They're yeah. playing a close game against a tough team. Yes. A Malden, Malden. They actually played Malden, not New Madrid. I'm right, sorry. Right, right, Yeah, that, that was Malden. Here's Howard now. He's going to roll near side, looks to the end zone, throws it deep to ground. Oh, just out of wow. his hands there. That looks like to be, tell you what, <laughs> that's a heck of a pass running kind of what we call against the grain and throwing that. What I mean, that's on the run. That was on the money. Wow. I tell you, folks, got a just flag. watching him play now, Dexter's got a good one's on their hand no in Jackson doubt. Howard. What do we call? Wow, that Howard bodes well. Yeah, Howard offered Pullum, and then two linemen. It is Peyton Hartline and Caden Lee. That's a bright future if you can start five no sophomores. No doubt. Now, too, Dexter got penalized for something. I get holdings, only thing I can think of. It looked like it, the flag was kind of in the territory of it, the it, It's going to be a spot line. foul on the hold. Back mm -hmm. way up. So now Dexter likely in a passing situation first down. 28 seconds. And got one timeout remaining. Howard looks left, gets it out to Graham quickly. He's got it. Going to be upfield. Makes a man miss there. He's going to take it far side, and that's going to be a horse collar. Yeah, that's, that's a, a personal a, foul. Wow. That's going to be an automatic first and <laughs> stops the clock at 18.2. It, it might have been a face mask. No, they called it. It was just a... Yeah, that's an automatic first down, right? Well, I just thought the official may have oh, pointed back toward Dexter. He did. He grabbed him up on a horse collar, and both flags come flying to the spot. So that's that, going to be the gain plus the what I thought was a personal foul horse collar. He may have pointed the wrong way. Yeah, they're, march, no. they're marching that the back world? against Dexter. What did they call? Well, here, if I'm Dexter now, we, we've backed I, up deep. I'm I, just, I just sit on it and be happy at, at half. Wow, what in the world did they call? You make one safe play and then throw it to the end zone maybe. Because yeah. you, you've still got a – you've got one timeout left, so you can run a safe play and then throw it for the end zone. See I if tell you, you uh, this has been probably back in 2008. Sykeston and Popper Bluff were tied. It was the last play of the game, and Popper Bluff threw a Hail Mary. Sykeston ran the pick all the way back, about 90 yards. So that <laughs> anything can happen with high school players. I'm surprised he's just not sitting on it. But, again, he's had success throwing that deep ball. I'd keep throwing it. Howard puts a man in motion. That's Quavez. He is looking, looking, slant pass to McDonald. He's got it upfield. McDonald, look at him go. He is wow. down to the five inside the five. Wow. I, I've said for two years calling Sykeston football that that slant pass is so ridiculously hard to, to uh, defend. That's why Tom Brady, that's one, and obviously he's a supreme athlete, but he has made an absolute fortune throwing that slant and had those receivers to throw it to. It's kind of like the pick and roll in basketball, Bob. It is so, so tough to defend. Well, I've got to believe Howard is approaching 150 got to be. yards they're or more. They're kicking a field goal. Wow. And so they're out of timeouts. They're going to go ahead oh, and put yeah. the men in here. They're going to try to take this score up three well, more. Better watch the fake here. I wouldn't be surprised to try to run a fake. DeMint, DeMint has been kicking some in practice this week. Who's the Close. holder? Is the holder the quarterback? 
I'm not. I think I, that's Williams who uh, held it earlier in the game. Okay. Dement's been kicking around 30-yard field goals maybe this week in practice. Snap downs, bobbled a little bit up and good. Oh so my the gosh. Mint gets the wow. three on the board. First State Community Bank has been named the number one bank in Missouri by Forbes, and we think they might be onto something. When it comes to banking, we've always said that people should come first, and we hold true to that idea. Opening an account has never been easier. You can even do it online. We want our community to thrive, and that's why we put it in our name. So come bank with the certified best at First State Community Bank, serving our community because it's who we are. Well, Matt, everything has gone for Dexter. Even when things are bad for Dexter, it's good. <laughs> right. You know, they back, got backed up on several penalties. The pass to McDonald as he just nipped that one right inside right there. Got the big first down, and then they kicked the field goal from DeMint. So looked like it was even tipped. Done much offensively since their first drive. I agree. I agree. That's uh, like we're going to have a squib kick here. Yep. Ball up the middle on the ground. There's let go. That is taken, I think, Gadbury there. Gadbury. Mm -hmm. Takes it far side and down. So that will take us to the half. Dexter with a commanding lead, 25-7. to seven. Folks, don't go away. We've got Luke. Uh, Mayor coming up, visiting with us here in just a few. We're going to take a one-minute break. We'll be back with uh, Dustin Mayor, I'm sorry, here in the box with me in a few. Juju Promotions in New Madrid is your one-stop shop for all your personalized merchandise. Whether it's screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, heat presses, or decals, we've got something that will suit your needs. So you, your school, or your business will always be looking its best. There's tons to see, from apparel to accessories. So what are you waiting for? Stop into Juju Promotions today in New Madrid, Missouri. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. We're right here at King Jerry Lawler's Hall of Fame Bar and Grill on world famous Beale Street, and as you can see, Oh my gosh, we have the best barbecue ribs in Memphis. Oh my gosh, the gumbo is out of this world. But you gotta try the King's Triple Decker Slam Burger. You'll love it. Mathis Funeral Home of Dexter and Bernie strives to provide their community with the accommodations and services needed to relieve your family during times of loss. For more information, give them a call and see how Mathis Funeral Home can help meet your expectations in celebrating your loved ones. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. Welcome back to Dexter, Missouri, as we will be able to take in the sights and sounds of the Dexter Bearcat Band. And I am joined alongside of Dustin Mayer. Dustin, long-time guy here in Dexter. So, uh, real quick, we're going to talk uh, job first, then we'll get to the football game. Tell us here in Dexter a little bit about yourself and the surrounding community, what you do in Dexter and the surrounding areas, and how you serve those folks. Yeah, I appreciate you all having me on. Um, I'm an attorney. I practice law here uh, for about seven or eight years. Been out of law school 11 years now. Time kind of flies on that. Um, opened up a title company here three or four years ago in town, Stoddard County Title and Escrow. Um, got my law office, mayor law office, in the same building, and we, uh, on the on the legal side, service a variety of uh, needs, criminal defense and personal injury. Uh, work comp and a lot of business transactions and deeds associated with the title company. So Sawyer Smith was in the office with you. 
Is he still serving? For the folks who may or may not know, is he still serving in your office with you as well? Yeah, he'll be there to the first of the year, and then he'll transition to the prosecutor role. So first of the year, so folks who need to conduct business there can certainly still catch up with Sawyer, and congratulations to Sawyer on that. I um, know you had to have me a little help on the way to advise him on some things there, so I'm sure he was glad for the opportunity with you, Dustin. And, um, you know, right now going on in your offices, what, what is going on, what's busy, what do folks need to know about? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, just a, a good time of year. There's uh, a lot of people that are trying to get a purchase in on a real estate before interest rates go up. So, you know, if you're you're one of those folks out there, uh, you've got something under contract or talking to a loan officer, uh, just tell them you'd like to close with Stoddard County Title and Escrow, and we'd be uh, glad to transact that uh, closing. Cover. Uh, we go all over the Boot Hill region. We obviously specialize here uh, in Stoddard County and get the majority of our business here in Stoddard County, but we do uh, a lot in New Madrid, Dunklin, Butler, mainly the contiguous counties uh, of Stoddard County. We do a lot of agriculture um, closings and transactions in those counties. If it's in, in folks needing it, I hope you, they can, I know, come by the office there downtown in Dexter. I believe that is, I want to say that's not Vine Street. Vine Street, I believe, is behind you. East Stoddard. We're right East beside Stoddard. the post office across the uh, street there uh, to the west of the post office in downtown Dexter. Okay, and phone numbers they can reach you guys out there? Yeah, the law office is 573-624-7876. I'm going to come back and say those numbers before you go off air. So let's talk football now. Man, Jackson Howard's a sophomore quarterback, but he looks like a sophomore in college right now. He has thrown the thing everywhere. He was very impressive. I, I uh, The whole team, actually, top to bottom. But Jackson, like you said, for being first-time starter, being a sophomore, uh, really bright days ahead for Dexter football, it looks like. Yep, and, you know, something you talk about, bright days ahead, set up here in the booth earlier, the sophomore surge. Dexter's starting five sophomores on uh, offense right now. There's not many people who say that playing a very high level of football. You just don't do that starting five sophomores. That's almost half your offense. And one of them being the guy who handles the ball every single time out there in Howard. Um, that's something big to say when you're that deep in uh, talent at a sophomore level to start those guys. And it's not just there because you see kids getting subbed in and out. I, I love what Dexter's able to do with that. This is as deep as a team of Dexter of talent of skill positions that I can recall ever having. Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting because they're only going to continue to get better as they grow and develop and hit that weight room. Uh, I think we've already seen just a great jump just from week one, you know, especially on the defensive side, what they've been able to do on, on defense. Or they've just completely shut Sykeston down almost other than the one drive. Interesting you say that. You know, week one, some kids playing, you know, different positions. We have some kids have to miss, miss week one for practice reasons, injuries, whatever, that are back this week. You know, notably, Nolan Offer played defensive end last weekend. He's a 170-pound kid, and he was going up a kid over 300. They manhandled him. This week, Colin Simpkins and Jaden Willems have taken over that defensive end, slid Offered out to the uh, linebacker position. It put Dexter in a lot better situation to control that run. Credit the coaches for seeing some things, getting these people more involved. They noticed real quick they needed to get bigger on that offensive or defensive line. There's Colin Simpkins in. I believe Garrett Coons in the middle. So good job there. Um, I'm really impressed by Coach Jamerson has come in, Chad Jamerson. His energy, we talk about it again, you know, this summer, his social media feeds, kids posing in a weight room. We really did, you know, see extra football is fun. Not that Aaron Pixley doesn't make it fun. Kids enjoyed Aaron Pixley as well. But this is a new coach. He had to win these players over in the trust, and he did it. And I, I don't know if you followed much on the social media of what the kids did there, but it was fun. I, I didn't. I, I won't lie. I'm a little bit older school, I guess, but uh, it, it's great. I mean, what he's done from week one, like you said, to week two, the adjustments they've made. I mean, credit to Coach Jamerson and company. Uh, that's been fantastic, and hopefully they can keep that up all year long. Not to skip over Sykeston, um, right now I do believe their senior quarterback, Joseph Heckemeyer, as big as arm as there is in the boot heel, he has no completions. Are you a little bit surprised of what you've seen out of Sykeston tonight? I am, especially considering how much the run has been shut down. I was actually commenting over in the stands I, before this last long pass that he that he got the guy open in the post and overthrew him. I said, how many have they thrown up a forward pass this half? I mean, they haven't let it, really let him let loose, I feel like. Uh, so maybe we'll see that in the second half. We will. Folks, get your pen and pad ready because we're going to do the numbers again real quick. What do you look for in the second half here? 
Well, I look for Dexter to stay stout on defense and uh, continue to be well balanced. They've been so well balanced on offense with the run and the pass. Um, continue to push them uh, up front. They're up, and you'd like to see them just uh, keep the run going and, and grind them down uh, from their perspective. I guess from Sykeston's perspective, uh, you'd like to see to get that run game going, I think. Um, and they may have to air it out a little bit to catch up. I, I think they've got to get the ball in the air because right now they're finding themselves down 25-7, to 7, and they can't stop Dexter's offense. They've got to move the football. Folks, put down the soda or the pizza. Here comes the phone numbers again. Dustin, how can I get a hold of you? Yeah, Mayor Law Office is 573-624-7876, and Stoddard County Title and Escrow is 573-624-3325. Folks, that's Dustin Mayer. He's got everything you need from the legal side down there, and if he can't get it, he's going to look it up and then have it for you in a heartbeat. We're going to take a break. It is 12 minutes left before the second half starts. We're going to get in a few more breaks. I've got to get in a break myself. Don't go away. Dexter up big in this one, 25-7 at the half. In a very short period of time, we've experienced amazing growth and success at Southeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. And through it all, we've had only one goal, to get you back to life. And when things get better, when you feel better, we'll be right here to cheer you on. Southeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, always by your side. For over 100 years, Stoneville Cotton has helped farmers stay strong and win their growing seasons, delivering protection against key weeds and insects to maximize their yield potential. For more information, visit our website, Stoneville Cotton, own the early. Etc. We pride ourselves just as much on the etc. as we do on the wings. We've got cold beer, we have great times, and most importantly, we have 82 mouth-watering food items that aren't wings. So the next time you find yourself at a wings etc., go ahead, try the etc. Wings etc. Good food, great times. It takes a lot to make a home, and no one knows that better than WW Wood. It takes a plan and a steady hand to start the process. The knowledge and know-how to make those necessary cuts, craftsmanship to shape out an idea, and the artistry to add in the fine details and final touches. Our employees are right there with you, bringing it all together to make a quality and custom product that makes your home uniquely yours. So thank you for allowing WW Wood to make your house feel like a home. At Young Real Estate, we're Southeast Missouri, just like you. We are parents. We are teachers. We are grandparents. We are active in our community. We are patriots. Serving all of Southeast Missouri, and we are here for you. We are young.
Growing cotton in the Mid-South is hard work. As a farmer, you make tough decisions every day. Choosing a cotton variety shouldn't be one of them. Next-gen brand varieties from Americot are bred specifically for cotton growers like you. We're 100% independent and farmer-owned. Plant cotton that works as hard as you do. Americot. All we do is cotton all the time. back of your vehicle you pay too much Does your business need, uh, literally anything? When we founded CNS Cleaning Supply, our goal was simple. Become a one-stop shop for anything and everything your operation might want. From car care to condiments, mops to markers, soaps to staplers, and everything in between. Which is a lot. CNS has got you covered. Give Delane Beckwith a call at 573-217-0104. Or visit cscleaningsupply.com to get set up with, well, literally everything. Tell them Delane sent you. If you feel like you never get the time you need with your insurance agent to find the right coverage, it might be time to make a change. Tyler Miller of Flatland Ag Insurance in Clarkton works to make sure, each and every day, that his clients feel they are taken care of. With years of experience in crop insurance in four states, he strives to provide you with the exact coverage you need for your specific situation. For more information, give Tyler a call at 573-276-8044. Here's to another great year. At Focus Bank, we believe in really free checking. What does that mean? Well, opening an account requires no more than $25 with no minimum balance requirements or monthly service charges. You'll also have access to online and mobile banking, online bill pay, direct deposits, mobile deposits, automatic payments, e-statements, a nationwide network of ATMs, and an instant issue debit card. All for free. Your first order of checks is on the house, and you'll also receive a complimentary thank you gift. Come visit us in Sykes and Charleston, Brothersville, or East Prairie. Focus Bank. Simple, hassle-free checking that's really free. First State Bank and Trust is more than just products and services. We're there for you for your first paycheck, buying a home, opening a small business, starting a family, or planning to retire, and everything in between. We're the local bank you know and trust for all of your financial needs. Visit fsbtrust.com or stop by your local First State Bank and Trust to explore all of your financial options. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. First State Community Bank has been named the number one bank in Missouri by Forbes, and we think they might be onto something. When it comes to banking, we've always said that people should come first, and we hold true to that idea. Opening an account has never been easier. You can even do it online. We want our community to thrive, and that's why we put it in our name. So come bank with the certified best at First State Community Bank, serving our community because it's who we are. Juju 
Promotions in New Madrid is your one-stop shop for all your personalized merchandise. Whether it's screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, heat presses, or decals, we've got something that will suit your needs. So you, your school, or your business will always be looking its best. There's tons to see, from apparel to accessories. So what are you waiting for? Stop into Juju Promotions today in New Madrid, Missouri. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. We're right here at King Jerry Lawler's Hall of Fame Bar and Grill on world famous Beale Street. And as you can see, oh my gosh, we have the best barbecue ribs in Memphis. Oh my gosh, the gumbo is out of this world. But you got to try the King's Triple Decker Slam Burger. You'll love it. Mathis Funeral Home of Dexter and Bernie strives to provide their community with the accommodations and services needed to relieve your family during times of loss. For more information, give them a call and see how Mathis Funeral Home can help meet your expectations in celebrating your loved ones. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. In a very short period of time, We've experienced amazing growth and success at Southeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. And through it all, we've had only one goal, to get you back to life. And when things get better, when you feel better, we'll be right here to cheer you on. Southeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, always by your side. For over 100 years, Stoneville Cotton has helped farmers stay strong and win their growing seasons delivering protection against key weeds and insects to maximize their yield potential. For more information, visit our website, Stoneville Cotton, own the early. Back in Dexter, Missouri, 25 to 7, a minute 40 before we start the second half. And Matt Sykeson had one drive, but outside of that, it has been all Dexter all night long here in this first half. Absolutely. Dexter is probably, other, like you said, other than that one drive, Sykeson had a lot of ball control and controlled it. I think we figured seven minutes or somewhere around that area. Other than that, Dexter, it's absolutely, we don't have the stats, but we have. I guarantee you they've got the uh, lead in first downs, time of possession, uh, short fields, I mean, whatever, however you want to break this down. Of course, more importantly, on the scoreboard, all that doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, uh, th th they're up 25-7 to seven at half. And unless Sykes to make some adjustments and gets her legs back under them, this might be an early evening for the, for the Bulldogs. Try and remember and recap in this game, early on, Howard to Jackson Graham, touchdown pass, 40, 50, 60 yards, I can't remember how mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Again, second drive, Howard Graham again, another touchdown. I can't remember who scored a third one right now, but Dexter punched another one in as well. I'm trying to remember Seemed that like number play. nine ran that in. Uh, uh, R.J. Farmer for yeah. the one, correct. Yeah, R.J. Exactly. Farmer the score. And then the field goal right before the half by right. Levi to Mint. Um, right. And notable for Dexter, Caden Kennedy went down 
I would doubt he's going to return tonight. He did not come back the first half. You're up 25-7. to seven. I can't imagine the second half. Yeah. I'm not going to disclose much more about the injury just for his privacy and for next week's opponent's right. advantage. But we'll see what happens there. But no need to bring him back. For Sykeston, you know, they had that one play there. They controlled the ball on offense extremely well. Looks like also Logan Josephate may be out for the game. As I see Kennedy and uh, Josephate coming back to the field. I believe both of those guys are out. Josephate was dealing with a so. nagging injury earlier in the week, so they may rest him as well. But, you know, Sykeson had that one drive. A big key they had, they were starting to move the ball a little bit again. The huge – the fumble and the sack, yeah. that was right. big. Yeah, that was a third down. It was already – they were behind the markers a little bit already. Did it win the bad snap and the, or whatever it was, and then the, the big snap – or the sack, that, that just took all the air out of them, it looked like. It, it sure did. Here is the man. He's going to kick it off. He has got number two. That is Isaiah Jimerson Patterson. Patterson, and I believe, is that 22 with mm -hmm, him? Mm -hmm. There's a kick. It's going to go. Patterson will take that at his nine-yard line. He'll bring it up now across the 20-yard line, out across the 25 to the 30. He cuts it back inside, and Dexter struggling to get him down. Oh. Now he's going to cross a 45 stiff arm, and there's a freshman. Devin Turnbow takes him down. So nice return there for Sykes yep. to start the second half. And Patterson, they need to keep moving the football just like that. Absolutely. <laughs> As a Sykeson fan, I'm glad they didn't call it, but it looked, sure looked like a, and I don't know what they call it, a block in the back or a clip, and I couldn't tell who it was. But about the time they were tackling, it looked like somebody just hammered the Dexter defender in the back, and it didn't get seen or didn't get called, I guess. But maybe there's a break Sykeson's looking for, but they got a long way to go. Sykeston needed one there. They've got uh, Heckemeyer back in the game now. Pistol formation. Now he steps up to the side, flanks him to the left. Here is the blitz coming. That is Alford. He's right there. Missed the tackle. Alford had a chance to wrap him up sure and did. sling him back. Giving him a, maybe a yard on that play. That's a generous spot, I will say. Thought Dexter was going to drop him for a loss. He kind of squirmed out of it. The, the snap looked a little bit high and kind of threw the – timing of the playoff, but Dexter was definitely in a, I assume they're in a run blitz, they just, because Sykeston hasn't thrown it, but just a couple of times, so they're just straight out blitz and just matching up numbers and numbers. They got more hats coming at the ball and Sykeston can block. Dexter has definitely been aggressive on defense tonight. The most aggressive I can ever remember of Bearcat defense. Here's the run again up the middle. Heckemeyer, he gets outside, no contain, and he's going to take that down. Williams may be the only man who can get him. Heckemeyer down inside the 10 and to the – they're the, going to mark him down yeah. at the – I believe What's they're going to call eight, him out. Nine. Yeah, he stepped out. So he stepped out. That's what out. they're calling it, yeah. Biggest gain of the night for Sykeston, yeah. and Joseph Heckemeyer does it with his legs. Matt, that's a guy you said who doesn't run very fast. No, well, I, I just said he's plenty capable. He just doesn't. And uh, that was a really nice play. I tell you what, he showed a little burst of speed. I didn't know he had. Good for him. He's a big kid. He's 6'3", strong, athletic. He uh, made a nice play. And I couldn't tell, Bobby, I couldn't tell if that was a botched play. I say botched, just missed a, somebody missed an assignment there, and he took off with it. And it, Sometimes those plays what surprise your defense. It looked like that play was designed to go inside. Right. And kicked he it outside it right and no contain. Mm -hmm. They've got it now inside the 10. First time in a while for Sykes, and that is Sherrod. He takes it inside. He is stacked up by the Bearcats just across the five-yard line. They're going to call him down on the five. And that previous play moves the Bulldogs into the young real estate red zone. That's prime real estate for scoring for all your real estate needs. See Young. As we get a chance, we will try to sneak in some more scoring updates. Right. I know we had one on the Kennett game. 39 to nothing at half, I believe. So Kennett rolling right along. Good team. Sykeston looking to get in the end zone here as they've got it at the five now. Heckemeyer's got it. He has got Sherrard to his backside. Here's a snap, fake handoff. Offered in pursuit, gets a hand on him. That is incomplete. Again, Dexter putting pressure on him, and it changes the uh, angle of that throw and the he, comfortability of Heckemeyer. He did. If you see that, though, when he kind of rolled out, the ball rolled down his leg a little bit, and he didn't have it really secure. And then when he's trying to throw it, he kind of threw behind the receiver. I saw the – look like maybe – I'm, sure, I'm not sure who it was. They kind of snuck out. He had, a, he had a little room there, but kind of had a bad handle on the ball, and the throw was a little short. Luckily for Sykeson, he secured that. That would have been a huge oh, miscue. Oh, man, absolutely. 
I'm surprised. That, uh, I'll be surprised if they don't take two downs here and just try to pound this in the end zone. There's right. Again, a missed time there. Right. Ran into his own man, and Dexter stacks him up to five. So there are all kind of offensive miscues and communications going on for yeah, Sykes right now. I can't tell if that's a read play. That almost looked like the you know the old zone read. You stick it in there and you yank it out, depending on what that end does on the side you're going. And it could look like they just had some miscommunication, and that's not on the inside the five here. Fourth and five, a lot of confidence right now from Sykeston to go for this. Yeah, well. Sykes, maybe a little bit more of a desperation move. I, I was just going to say, yeah, they, I think they just need a touchdown, and their, their kicker I, from this distance would probably put it in, you know, could put it between the uprights, but I think they're trying to here get the touchdown. Here comes the pass. That is slung in there, oh, that is incomplete, yep, and going to yep. be a flag in the end yeah, zone. Yeah, he tripped him. It, it looked like incidental contact, but he got tripped. You saw him. I think it looked like that was DeMarcus Sanders, but he, their legs got tripped up. And you know what, Bobby? I'm not exactly sure. Should spot that half the distance and automatic first. I, it's just, okay. Well, it's in the end zone, so maybe well, it's going to be half the distance from the five. So See, two, I don't two know if that's a first down. That's an automatic first down and half in the end zone, yes. Well, gosh, a couple years ago, several now, Sykeston had the same thing happen at Hillsboro in a playoff game, and they kept getting – we were on offense. Hillsboro kept getting called for pass interference, and it was not a first down. I didn't understand the rule, and, and maybe it was a different call. I don't know. But, yeah, that's a – well, that's a break that Sykeston was looking for for sure after a couple of miscommunication there on a couple of handoffs here. First would, down, Sykeston from the two. Hackermeyer's got it. He's got Sherrard and Gadbury split side to side. Gadbury near side. Snap is off. It is to Hegemeyer. Keeps it himself, and he is in for the score. That's touchdown Sykeston. So Hegemeyer runs in both TDs so far to Sykeston tonight, and <laughs> they are back on the board. <laughs> See, that looked like, again, that, that design zone read that looked like they both had it going, went, plunged in in the end zone. You know, and looking at it from up here, it just doesn't look smooth and comfortable. No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. Which, and you can practice that all you want, but when games Game happen speed. and a guy is coming at you, it's a lot it's different. A different. It's, a, it's, it's just different. Yep. So Sykes and Sid, it's at 13. They'll want to push this. Let's see if they go for the – they're yep. going to go for, for two. two. Yep, to make this get down 10, two, two possessions. Four wide. That is Sherrard in the backfield behind Heckemeyer. He's got it. It's going to look to pass. Quick slant and knocked away by the Bearcats. So it will stay 25-13, 9-17 left to go in the third. We're going to take a 30-second break and be back on the A-Corp Media Networks. At Wings Etc., we pride ourselves just as much on the Etc. as we do on the Wings. We've got cold beer, we have great times, and most importantly, we have 82 mouth-watering food items that aren't Wings. So the next time you find yourself at a Wings Etc., Go ahead, try the etc. Wings etc. Good food, great times. Back in Dexter, Missouri, Matt. I believe you got a few scores to update us on before we kick this one off. I do. Uh, Francis Howell up at half, 21-14 over Jackson. New Madrid County Central all over East Prairie, 50 to nothing at half. Kelly handing it to Malden in the second quarter, 28-0. Portageville up 42 to six in the third quarter over Hayti. Still got Charleston and Chaffee at half. Charleston up 18-0 in the third. Excuse me, in the second quarter, Park Hill Central up 30-13 over Crothersville at Crothersville. Hillsboro up 35 nothing at half. Uh, St. Vincent up 19 to 15. That looks like a late score, and I don't have. Well, I said Kennett was up 30, 35 or 39 to nothing. So I'm going. I'm going to. Give you short, even money. Short kick there. That is going to be out of bounds. Yes. So Dexter will get that at the 35. Real quick, folks, next week we will be in action in Kennett, Missouri, as Sykeston travels to Kennett. That will be Kennett's homecoming game there. So big matchup. Uh, Kennett's rolling right now. They are. Sykes, Sykeston needs to put some things together because Kennett will not be an easy matchup at all next week. No, weekend. no, ever since they had Coach um, – Wyatt, was that the guy that went from Malden to there? Yes. He really turned that program around, and then he's got one of his assistants, and I can't remember his name now, that's taken over. and just uh, Webster. Sort of Webster. Webster. And just. Dexter native Webster. Is that right? Yes. And he, I tell you what, he has just flat carried on what they're doing, and they are still a really, really good football team. 
So Dexter has it. They'll come out. Howard will lead his team. He will have Farmer flank behind him. Off to the side will be, that is Graham now. He's going to go to the top of your screen, number 22. And McDonald is your slot, number seven there, to the side of him. And offered near side at the bottom of the screen, number 32. The possession receivers for Dexter pull him again, your tight end. Be interested to see if uh, the Bulldog defense or the defensive coordinator are going to dial up a little bit of pressure. Even some run blitzes here. Here it is, quickly out to Farmer. Drop the pass and no call. Is is that behind him? I was just, I was just, they're not. Nobody's calling. I don't, I don't even see the incomplete sign, so I'm not sure where that is. So they're going to uh, say incomplete. I'm right next to the coaching staff from Saxton. <laughs> they're calling for a behind the line of scrimmage and certainly behind the receiver. They call that. They thought it was, but. The, yeah, I, I'm like you. They didn't even see the incomplete sign being whistled. They're not talking about it, so they're pretty clear on their, or at least the officials are. Real quick, Matt, I'm not sure if Dexter's going to pick up on this, but look where the linebackers are for Sykes right now. They are They tight. are very, very close. Sykeson has bunched up everything. Here is Quavez. He takes it far side. He's going to try to turn it upfield. He will. Gets it past the marker. Oh, that was a good Maybe hit Maybe a two-yard gain. That was a good hit there on him. He... They strung it out as good as they could, and they tried to set that edge, but uh, Trayvon Dukes just laid a good lick there and uh, limited that to, what, two yards or whatever? Two yards, third and long for Dexter. Tell you what, for Sykeson to get back in this, this is a big play here. It's, I know it's early in the third quarter, but, if they, again, we've said it early, if they can get their offense back on the field here after scoring and then get right back on the field, never know how this thing will go. Dexter, three of nine last weekend on third and third down yardage, converting, not sure tonight, but it's been well. Yeah, I was Here's Howard, say, backs really up, good. he's looking. Nobody there, takes it himself, is going to try to get it upfield, and he is going to oh, be taken down for maybe a yard there. loss or good a yard gain. Yard or, gain. Yeah, that was good pursuit. That was, tell you what, that was what you call almost like a coverage sack. I was looking around. You could see him going through his progressions, just like you talked about. He didn't have anything there and tried to pick it up, and the guys were able to shed their receivers and get back up to put some hats on the ball. Well, in, in, you talk about something key right here. Joseph Pate and Kennedy, out of this football game, they yeah. are, I believe, the no, – there was actually three kids, so two of the three returning starters on offense are out of the game for this. Yeah, Dexter. that's – th those are – you could tell those are big – those are big losses to them. So Dexter now is going to have to – boy, you're talking about a tough one. Dexter has to use a timeout yeah, on special that's, teams. Yeah, that's – They need to regroup in a yeah, hurry because agreed. they are starting to unravel here in the third. We're going to take 30 and be back here on the A-Court Media Networks. It takes a lot to make a home, and no one knows that better than WW Wood. It takes a plan and a steady hand to start the process. The knowledge and know-how to make those necessary cuts – craftsmanship to shape out an idea, and the artistry to add in the fine details and final touches. Our employees are right there with you, bringing it all together to make a quality and custom product that makes your home uniquely yours. So thank you for allowing WW Wood to make your house feel like a home. Back in Dexter, struggling on offense and again to get their steps together on a kicking game. That's that, a, that is tough to have to take yeah. a timeout on special teams. Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Quavez, now your punter. I believe that's usually Kennedy's job, but Quavez in now punting. Snap. He's got it. Oh, hit the kicker. Gets Ooh. it away, and it is a fire, very fire, short fire. kick. Get out of the way. Yeah. That is taken down there by Landon Weathers. So it's going to be Sykeston football as they will come back for their second possession. They moved the ball well in the first uh, possession after half. Good return near midfield and then just marched it right down the field on Dexter and scored. A lot of that on the legs of quarterback Joseph Heckemeyer. Yes, yes. He's a senior. He's taking on that mantle. He understands it. And if he's got to run it in there, he I said earlier, again, he's not the main weapon, but he is right now, and he's he is plenty capable of doing it. On neon night, Dexter is hoping they don't sing the blues here in the second half. <laughs> Empty backfield for Heckemeyer now. It takes a snap, takes it straight up the middle himself. He has got positive yards and more. Wow. He has first down yards now past the 40, down inside the 35. That was an absolute design run. You see that coming. Wow. Well, 
Dexter contained well in the first half and poorly so far in the second yeah, half. Yeah, it's, it's been, as they say, a tale, a, say, a tale of two halves. It's just been Sykeston was kind of, looks like they were on their heels for most of the first half, and now Dexter's the same, and it's going to be a gut check all the way to figure out who's going to make stops late. Heckemeyer again in the shotgun. He's got Sherrard behind him. Will likely move up to his side as he has most game. Stays in a pistol there. Hand goes to him. Far side, he is taken down after a nice gain. There's going to be a penalty flag, guessing a hold. We'll say a hold or maybe a – it's hard yep. to see from here. Maybe a face mask. I don't know, but I'm guessing hold. That's kind of thrown in that area. Yeah, near the line yep. of scrimmage and near where the play is at. Going to be a holding call yep. against Sykeston. Spot fouls would be 10 yards from the spot. Well, that's – replay first down. He's not going to be – really far behind. Also, I wanted to point out, I understand that there are some buffering issues uh, a little bit late in the first half. We apologize for that technical issue. and We're trying to get that fixed as quickly as we can. Hopefully, it's up back and running right now. Well, Matt, I say that's a spot foul, but it yeah, looks like just they moved say, it 10 yards from the, from from the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. Yeah, I'm with you. That If that was a spot foul. But, hmm. I, I, I thought a yeah. holding call would be a spot foul from the spot of the hole. Maybe, maybe I get the NCAA and NFL rules kind of all jacked up, but nonetheless, Heckemeyer five wide here. He's got it. First and eighteen. <laughs> so he rose near side, and he's got another big gain. Dexter just wow. cannot do anything with him. So it is a spot foul. That they, he had a two yard gain. Spot foul backs him up ten. Oh. That made it eighteen. So there we, we go. were correct. Okay. Well. Get in front of those markers again. It makes it second and something. Probably a second and seven, seven, I believe. Seven, yeah. Here. Yep, that's exactly what it says now. So that, that makes it a little more tolerable. That was a big play. But that, that reminded me, even though we didn't pick up the first down, just like the play when Sykeston had Dexter third and whatever, they threw that big slant for score late. Or, well, they didn't end up scoring, but picked up a huge play. That's those are Boy, those are tough on your defense. Man. Dexter looking for some matches. Here comes Alford on the blitz. He's got a shot at him. Just missed it. Incomplete pass. Uh, that was all predicated on the pressure. Wow. That, that is a straight-up untouched man for mm -hmm. Dexter coming through. Six hats on five. There's just not anything you can do, especially with nobody in the backfield. That's A lot of times that's why they design those plays with your uh, running back in the back to come pick up that blitz. And he just came through untouched. And luckily, Joseph was able to get it away and – of course, even the throw was into uh, coverage, but again, I think that's just self-preservation to get that baby out of there. Now, I'm not sure he's all for close. Do you hit the quarterback there? Because I, I think he's within the step. He, if I got a chance to hit him and his I, ribs are exposed, I'm hitting him. Yeah, I mean, obviously a clean hit and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I I, I yeah, wouldn't it, have seen anything any issues with that. Here's Ron Heckemeyer on the ground again. Wow. Just did he pick? Yeah, he picked it up. Holy moly. Well, it, it's it's awful close on the hit because you don't want the penalty, but right. I think I think I put a hit on him. I I would too. I, I know your son. I don't know him, but I'm sure he's a nice young man. And I'm, but I, I'm like you. I'd have stuck a hat on him. Yeah, yeah. Just to let him know you're there. No, again, nothing clean. Just a clean hit, yes. like you said. Nothing, nothing, you know, bad or anything like that. And it makes him rethink how hard he wants to run the football. Uh, that's what that I mean. Sneaker. That's what I mean. Yeah. He's kind of having his way right now, and Sykeson's needing it. Boy, I'll tell you what, he is stepping up and doing it. Here he is again. He's going to pass. Those are the deep ball, man, He's open, there. and it is going to be a, a penalty in yep. the end zone. Yeah. He yep. never made a play on the football, so no. that's going to be pass interference. Going to take the ball. Should be to the two-yard line. Ben's the penalty is there in the end zone. He hit him really early. Yet, now, I think you can defend with your back to the ball and kind of face guard. But he hit him really, really early. Yep. You know, for, for Sykes, I, I believe that's probably the best thrown football I've seen Heckemeyer yeah. throw tonight. Yeah. That was a well-thrown yeah. ball to the corner. Had his man beaten coverage. Yeah. That puts Sykes in, in the young real estate red zone, which is prime real estate for scoring for all your real estate needs. See young real estate. Heckemeyer has got his team now. He is at the inside the tens. So was not on the two like I thought it would be. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. There's a slant pass. It is low and no signal. They're calling him catch. 
Marcus Sanders. So catch by Sanders. Very nice play. That's a low thrown ball, and he had to dig that. Well, I just got a message from Joseph's mother, Kim. Evidently, she was here, and again, she's recovering from COVID. She just sent me a message. Kim, I hope you're feeling better. I know you're proud of your baby boy and proud of all the team. We're proud of him, too, so get feeling better soon. Absolutely. I'm sure she's liking the second <laughs> half so far as it has picked up for Sykeston. <clears throat> Eckermeyer's got it. He looks to run it up the middle. He does right off the side of the tackle. He sounds like a broken record, but I, I don't know. He's a, he's a big, strong kid. I, I, sometimes you just have to go with what's working at the moment. I, I guess you just keep giving, you know, keep reading it. And Heckemeyer trying to go up, stood up, and touchdown got Sykeston. In. They are back on the board, wow. and this thing has tightened in yeah, a hurry. It's, it's, uh, it's gotten gotten tight really quick. 5-19 left to go on the third. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Sykeson's down 25-19 and see what Coach Pulley wants to do here. So he got the, the smart plays go for one. It makes it a five-point game because right. two it. points right now does not make it a field goal game still. That's true. That's a very, that's a very good call there, Bobby. I agree with you. And no. Nope, but what do two. I know? He's going <laughs> to go for it. <laughs> hey. Again, that's why we're on, we're <laughs> we're the novices up here in the booth. I can assure you. Here's the snap goes that's, to Gadbury on yep. the direct snap. He, he is going to be in. Wow! And that's why I'm here, up here, folks. Absolutely. Same Sykes here. to now 21-25. They're down four, 519 left on the clock, folks. We're going to get a 30 second break in. We'll be back with you here in Dexter. At Young Real Estate, we're Southeast Missouri, just like you. We are parents. We are teachers. We are grandparents. We are active in our community. We are patriots serving all of Southeast Missouri and we are here for you. We are young. Well, a tale of two halves so far here, and Sykeston owns the second half. Dexter has struggled mightily. N no offense, no containment from the defense on the edge. At this point, if I'm Dexter, I'm thinking about maybe putting another hand in the ground and going two linebackers, anything to stop the outside run because Sykeston's having their way right now with Heckemeyer there. And right now, Dexter, they're back to offense. They've got to find some flow. I agree. I agree. I, I, again, we were sitting here talking on the break. I'm not exactly sure what Sykeston's doing differently. Um, frankly, it just looks like they're stringing out some plays and, and making some tackles. Um, I'm sure the coaching staff has drawn up something and probably made a few adjustments. And I certainly don't know what they are other than, you know, it's kind of like uh, you get a guy up there to hit or, you know, hey, hit a three-run homer. I mean, you know, you, you can't really call that play. You hope your guys just step up, and that's what they've done so far. I'm sure Coach Pulley was uh, passioned at halftime, I can imagine. Sykeson has definitely stepped it up. <laughs> They'll trot back on the field. By the way, before I forget, Bobby, I was sitting there thinking at halftime, this is one beautiful facility, I'm going to tell you. With the turf and the new uh, concession area and the stands, I think there may be some added or whatever, this is a beautiful facility, let me say that. I, and I know it's been here a few years, but it's a, it's a beautiful facility. I, I believe the seed. Fourth year for the turf, I believe. This is okay. year number four. Okay. Do they play? Does Dexter have a soccer team? No soccer. Okay. Okay. Unless you want to play youth league. <laughs> then they've got it. Here's the kick. It's a good one. Sends <clears throat> McDonald back. He'll take that up inside his 10. Brings it up now. He will cross the 20. Good speed. Cuts it oh, back and falls. Trayvon Dukes with a nice open field tackle. Kind of just got him and tripped him up more than anything. Kind of hit the ball carrier and spun him and just got him off balance. Uh-oh, now Trayvon's cramping. That's, I'm not laughing. I'm just, I see him grabbing his leg and kind of coming off. I'm sure that's what it is. Those things will jump up and grab you. Dexter now looking and digging for a little bit of offense. They'll start their drive at the 21. Sykeston's rolling in the second half. Their defense is looking to turn up a little bit more pressure here. You know, 
You're right. That, look at those linebackers. They're still smashed up underneath. Here's a run. Farmer gets a nice run up the field. Big first down yardage and more for R.J. Farmer. Well, and wow. that's it. They uh -oh. call it out. But they, oh, they're calling him down at the 40 on the initial contact. So down at the 40 is Farmer. I, I thought, man, surely he didn't get up and run more. That was a big time run. Dexter needed that. Kind of just get the first down, get the chains moving. That was a big run. Well, if that turns out to be a fumble and Sykeson would have picked that up, they would have exploded in this game. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's a big turning point back in Dexter's favor. Yes. I don't, yeah, I think they called him down, though. I don't think it ended up being a fumble, but you're right. Had that happen, that's right. Bob is in motion. Hand to Farmer. Goes up the middle. Maybe for – there's a couple more yards. That's about a gain of five for mm -hmm. Farmer. Good run. Sykeston had surge there, it looked like. They were in the backfield. Just didn't make the tackle. Again, we're talking about execution. That's, you know, all levels, whether it be youth or high school or NCAA or NFL. It's all about executing and you know making tackles. Just make the tackles that are in front of you. Dexter right now finding their offensive drive going in the running game. Howard's had a good one so far, but it's been running this drive. I'm surprised they haven't gone back to the air more. They had a lot of success in that first half. Graham is your man there. He is at the top of the screen. Lee Michael McDonald in motion. Hannah Speaking McDonald. Of. He gets it upfield. First down from what? Uh -oh. McDonald to he Moore. He's got the 30. Now to the 20. To the 10. Give him six. Touchdown, Dexter. Well, that was a big play. Man, Sykeson looked like they had him contained all the way back by just a little bit of front of the line of scrimmage, and he just didn't quit. Missed tackles. Kind of the story of the night on this drive. Well, McDonald. He doesn't start on offense necessarily, but he is another super sophomore yeah. making his mark on this football yeah. game. Yeah, yep. He made a he made a play earlier tonight. That was a big run. Exactly what the Dexter Bearcats needed as they had stumbled out of the gate here in the third. Now back up ten and trying to make it eleven, and they do as Dement kicks it through. It's 32-21, 3:49 left in the third. We'll be back here on the A Corp Media Networks. Growing cotton in the Mid-South is hard work. As a farmer, you make tough decisions every day. Choosing a cotton variety shouldn't be one of them. Next-gen brand varieties from AmeriCot are bred specifically for cotton growers like you. We're 100% independent and farmer-owned. Plant cotton that works as hard as you do. AmeriCot, all we do is cotton all the time. Back here, and this is starting to turn out of what you called earlier, Matt, a <laughs> shootout. 32-21 Dexter, 3.49 left, and the Bearcats looked like they were on their heels and discombobulated, and all of a sudden they're back in the end zone and looking good. Couple big plays. Again, um, it's all going to turn out. You know, again, both, a lot of, or both teams have kids that play on both sides of the ball, so it come down to some conditioning. Sure looks that way. Sykeson needs the answer. There's just only one, only one way to do it, just answer and put the ball back in the end zone again. Give a shout out to uh, Sykeson School Board member along with me, Matt Drake, watching from Van Buren. There's one up the middle, and it's uh -oh. taken fumbled just right there. Uh -oh. And that is loose, and Dexter misses him, ties him up there. That is number 52 on the play, uh, Sebastian Ford for the tackle for Dexter. I tell you what, I've seen that play so many times. You fumble it and pick it up, and then you end up fumbling again. Saxon's fortunate not to put that back on the ground a second time. Dexter has them deep. They'll start at their own 23. Dexter needs to dial up defense. It has not been there so far in the second half. Heckemeyer has run wild and no containment from the Bearcats. I anticipate more of Joseph Heckemeyer this second, sec, or excuse me, third drive here in the third quarter. He'll send five wide. Dexter brings a backer down, looking for a possible blitz. It's like, uh -oh. Here we go. Here they, comes a blitz. Oh, they picked, picked it up. up. And incomplete. Again, that's a rush pass for no reason there. He had a man take your time and yeah. survey. He never yeah. checked the field down again. I think he I think he looked, and when he started to throw, the receiver turned his head and looked like he tried to hang on to it and not throw it. That's what that looked like to me because I saw him. He, Kind of looked at his receiver and said, hey, be ready for it. 
Matt, surprising enough, that is the first time tonight I've seen Sykeston actually adjust and take care of the blitz and linebacker. Yeah, yeah, he saw that left, uh, or excuse me, that right tackle kick out because he was on his uh, front side, Joseph's front side, not his blind side. He sure did. He kicked out and picked him up. They've got, three, yeah, three in the dirt and one coming this way. There's a tackle there. That is Colin Simpkins with the tackle. Well, it's amazing, just the momentum shift. You know, we talked about it's already seemed like it shifted back to Dexter just as quickly as it went away. Yep, and some people don't believe in momentum. It's oh. not a thing, but, oh, Matt, i got to believe you. I believe in it. Absolutely, absolutely. Dexter now will bring in Jaden Willems to be a DN. He's going to bring pressure from the outside, they hope. It is second long. So Dexter's expecting pass, evidently. We've been fortunate so far tonight, but the mosquitoes have started to make their way inside the booth with well, us. Well, you know what I call it. It's the, if, if it's not, it needs to be the official state bird or at least the southeast Missouri bird. Man, these suckers. Woo. So that, they're calling an illegal shift against Sykeston, decline. So Dexter takes it third down now instead of second down in the penalty. Third and long for Sykeston. Dexter needs to stop it, bring down up fourth down, deep in Sykeston territory, and Sykeston needs to move the football and get it past the change here for the first. They'll need to get it to, looks like the 33. Hagemeyer puts his man in motion, kicks him out. Offer picks him up well, and here's a design play. Nice play yeah, by Dexter, yeah. stopping him. It was a nice, they ran a nice screen. It just took like a long time to develop, and the screen came from the, the short side of the field, and by that time, Dexter had sniffed it out and just hit him as soon as he caught the ball. Turbo Williams on that play <laughs> absolutely blew up that screen. Yes, he did. He sure did. And he sure did get me excited on the mic. <laughs> that, that, I that's love a, it. That's the finest of plays you'll ever yeah, see as a high school kid he on saw a design it. screen. Yep, yep. You know, earlier we talked, or I mentioned, a Dexter player had said he's the smartest kid on the field for yep, Dexter. And, yep. and that just proves it. He yep. picked it up and saw he it. He saw it. He and, saw and, it coming the whole way. And, and that play they saw last weekend. Sykeson ran it. They was able to see it. Punt is off. It's a low kick. And Quavez lets it go. He's chasing it and not. Oh, I'm not oh sure that's why a bad he did play. That, that is going to be sure Sykeson that. football. That's a break. I, I think at that point you just let that thing go, right? You're, you're still going to have a very good field oh, position yeah. on that play. Yeah. And now Sykeston is sitting in a fourth and ten Speak and a first and ten now inside the 40-yard line. Speaking of momentum, yeah, that's a that's a. And, and you see the player on your hip pocket. When you see him on I your hip pocket, you just get away yeah, from just it. Just let it go, yeah. Because as soon as you reach down for that, he's fixing to blow you up. You oh, touch yeah. it, it's done. Yeah. One quick score, 42-12, Portageville over Haytai in the third quarter. And, and again, th these are high school kids. They're no, not no, 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 absolutely. They're not that, right. to know that right. at don't, that level, but, yeah, boy, that's don't, a costly one. It is. You don't, again, I'm not going to talk bad about high school kids. He made a mistake. He'll learn from it. But that was a, that's a crucial one right there for sure. That – that may uh, – in, in fairness to him, he's trying to make a play. He is. He is. And you want your kids making – trying to make plays for sure. There's Heckemeyer. He stays wow. inside the tackle now. Look he at him go. Score. He's going to go all the way, I believe. Graham's going to give chase and oh. out at the one. He hit the pylon, right? He hit the, yep, they they gave, gave it to him. him. Touchdown, yeah, Sykeston. Say, I was going to say, I, I, they always that, say if you hit that pylon. That was a beautiful job, by the way. The tackle kicks out and catches the outside yes. backer, and he stays right inside the tackle. That is a beautiful run right there by Heckemeyer. Yep, looked like designed the whole way. I tell you what, that's a big turn to give the ball up and Dexter marched it down the field and then you go basically three and out and score. Well, guns have been blazing here in the third. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Mr. Steve Beidler, our uh, AV director that does the YouTube games for the uh, for Sykeston. And he, he texted me and said, you're being very, um, what the word was he used? Let me see if I can find that. Well, Sykeson will go for two here. That's going to be handed. Sherrard, he takes it up the middle, and he is in. Got two in. point conversion is good. 32 29. Well, Matt, now I, I questioned the third two point conversion earlier. It's a three point ball right, game. Right. A field goal ties this That's thing. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Mr. Bartler told me I was objective. I told him I was in enemy territory. I didn't have any choice. <laughs> <laughs> well,
Well, you do have the Sykes and folks right there beside you. Well, that's you. true. That's true. It, I, it could be a tough way down the uh, steps. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Well, but now, we, we've got an injury on the field, Matt. <clears throat> I never like to stay on air when no, we have one. No. We're going to give them a chance to take care of this. We will be back here as soon as this is cleaned up, folks. <laughs> If Morland's not on the back of your vehicle, you pay too much. Back here, uh, injuries taken care of. That was Sherrod for Sykes and was down. He hopped up and ran off the field under his own power. So looks to be maybe a cramp or something simple, yeah, but yeah. he's going to be fine. Sykes and folks, rest assured, he will be back in this football game. Absolutely. You know, the, Matt, I just kind of learned out of respect for the player. Yeah. I try to get the information on the player. That way, if family's watching, they right. know, you know, family's down. There's a kick, low one. But I don't want to see a kid sit there on the ground in pain and anybody watch that or get – Anybody make a joke over their family? No, absolutely not. We, I think that's the right, absolute right call. We always try to get off air for that. If you ever wonder, and we try to give them a chance to get them yeah. up and moving. Yeah, before I agree. We come back. So yeah, you don't want anything. Again, like we talked about, these are anywhere from 15 to probably 18 year old kids, and they're kids. I, I've got one of them. I understand. It's uh, they're just kids, and hopefully, the the two that. Or three that Dexter has, I hope that they recover and they're back 100% next week. I don't, I don't like to see that. That's um, especially any time, certainly this early in the season. Dexter back at it on offense. This has closed from a 25 to seven at the half to 32-29 here in the third. Dexter missing a couple key players and Kennedy and Joseph Pate out for the game. At his Quavez in motion, Howard's going to roll near side, looking for a man, throws it downfield, and picked wow. off. That and floated on him, and that's yep. picked by number three there. Made, and uh -oh, here comes a flag, flag in. Yep. And he's going to take that down, and I think it's going to come back anyway. So. He's taken down at about the 12-yard line, yeah. but Sykeston is pumped. Guess Interception is Caden Craig, number three yep. for Sykeston. He's the backup quarterback. Made a nice play. That's a – like we talked about kind of – to your strong side and against the grain. He was running against the grain, so to speak, and uh, to his left, and it's hard to throw that way with a right-handed quarterback. you got to square up, get your feet set. He threw it, and he's been making fantastic passes all night. I, you know, again, it was just a mistake. Yeah, one floated on him right there and just mm -hmm. didn't have enough mustard to get it over the top. No. Uh, so that comes back. The flag is laying on the 40-yard line. We'll see what the call is and how far. Guessing 10 yards on it would set them at midfield. Still a big, two big mistakes here late. Well, it's a 15. 15 yarder, so that takes it all the way back to the 45. So that's going to be a personal foul of some sort. Personal foul. He just gave the personal foul signal. I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, so a personal foul on Sykeston. So there's football. They will take over at the 45 after the interception. They trail by three, 122 left in the third. May have been a low block or crack back or something like that. I'm not really sure. Didn't have his head around and hit a defenseless player. Get that a lot of times, cutting it back across the field. Sykes in four wide, Heckemeyer in the gun now. Here's a hike, it's to Sherrard. He is hit immediately at the line, wrapped up for maybe a short gain. Looks like a gain of one. Good pursuit there. They were able to get their surge pass that initial block. Held that, it to a really short game. There's going to be a lot of tired legs after this game tonight. Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's so many there's so many uh, players that play both sides of the football, and they're up and down the field. So 
Sykes them back to the line. That is a big offensive line for them mm -hmm. right now, too. Mm -hmm. If they've got the energy, they need the push. Here's the snap. Heckermeyer tries to take himself. He does. He is hit again, but Dexter fairly quick. Take him down for about a two-yard gain. Mm -hmm. So that's going to set it up third and long. It's probably third. the last, sorry, Bobby, probably the last play of the quarter, looks like. May get one off. Got third and five. Manageable. Coach is calling him over. He's going to yeah. let this run out. So 32-29 as we are going to wrap up the third quarter. It's going to send us to the fourth. Matt, send us in on the fourth quarter here. <laughs> Sykeston down, or excuse me, Dexter leading 32-29 at the end of three. Thanks for watching and come back to us on the Eight Court Media Networks. Matt, dangerous ground for Dexter in the break. We just heard Let's Go Bulldogs very <laughs> loudly on Dexter's home turf. I could, you could hear that, that's for sure. The momentum, I, you know, I don't know. As a Sykeston fan, you hope they pick it up here on third downs, third and five. I'm going to suspect uh, they're going to run it, but this may be in this position on the field and the time of the game, they may think they got two downs to get this. Definitely fourth down territory if they want to do it, and the way Dexter has stalled, only one attractive-looking drive this half. Mm -hmm. So if I'm Sykeston, it's two down territory. Yeah. It is early, though, so they could right. also punt it and try to pin Dexter deep. Right, exactly. That's Empty backfield for Heckemeyer here. He's got five wide. Dexter shows blitz. They bring it up the middle, and he is going to be stopped. Oh, he's nope. not stopped. Look at Heckemeyer go. What a night moly. on the ground. Look at this. Take it to the house, Joseph. Touchdown, Sykeston. Sorry about that. That is just <laughs> fine because you called it well, Matt. I yielded to the call. Sykeston now finds himself in control of this game down 25-7 to wow. at the half, and they have done nothing but own the second half, now up 35-32. They can go for either here as they could be up either four or five. Looks like a kick pending. here. Yeah. Tell you what, Kim, Joseph will sleep well tonight, win, lose, or draw. I'm going to tell you. But yes. it'll be a lot sweeter if he wins. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Scrambling around, and it is taken in, and they score there. Wow. So Sykeston, two-point conversion. Wow. And, you know, they are just doing whatever they want to Dexter right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting quandary we have, right? That's uh, not sure exactly what, what switch was flipped, but – it sure looks like one just just turned on its head, except for a couple of big plays at, what, the Dexter's third drive or whatever. Right now, Dexter is absolutely laying eggs all over this football field. They desperately need something to turn their way on this drive. They found themselves down 37-32. Game far from over because this no. is a lot of points for oh, a high school football absolutely. game. I thought coming into it, it would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of favored Dexter. I thought their speed and what they too. had at hometown. Yeah. Agreed. Hungry for the win. I thought 42 38 in that range. Well, and we, we may are get there. Those. <laughs> we may get there. That was a couple things that kept Sykeston in it. We always talk about the turnover battle. Um, well, there's been probably three key plays I can think of. The pick and then the, the fumble after holding Sykeston to fourth and long. And then th those those and, two got them right back in it. And two magnificent field positions for Sykeston right yes, there. Those mistakes, right. you know, no, if you yeah. want to win football clean games, clean up your mistakes, I know of three turnovers now. The fumble, two interceptions tonight yep. for Dexter. Yep. Last weekend they lost that turnover battle, I believe, maybe five to one. Yeah, so not going to win many games doing that. Yeah, you've got to clean up those mistakes. Uh -oh. And there's another miscue yeah, there. That is picked up by Graham. He is going to be Trayvon tackled. Dukes. Look at there. Just shot out of a cannon. 
That's the second big open, open field tackle Trayvon's made tonight. He made one just on the last kickoff. He is a super athletic kid. Man. Sykeston, all the momentum going their way at this moment. I, I've said it a couple times. Uh oh, 22 limping he off. Yeah, hopefully. That, that is a, Jackson Graham, their best receiver tonight. Hopefully, a cramp. Uh, looks. Can't really tell. That is McDonald, Quavez, and Sailors out there. Here's Farmer near side. He's going to get it upfield oh, across the 20. Oh, what nice pursuit there. Luke Gadbury on the backside. Big game for Dexter. Maybe we're going to call it seven. I may mm. be wrong. It may just be six. Well, he, Luke, somebody had to pursue from that backside because your receiver had the, the D back just pinned over here, and he had nowhere to go. And if Luke or somebody on that backside had not caught him, he would have had a lot of dirt in front of him, a lot of green. Second and three for Dexter now. A little bit of breathing room. Sykeston trying to dig deep and keep the momentum going on their side. Here's the snap, goes McDonald on yeah. reverse, and he's got it upfield oh, he and more. And oh, that's a good tackle there. Cut himself back. Stay upfield. You know, yeah, you never go did. backwards. Mm -mm. No. Just fall forward. That's maybe a gain of one. Could have been a gain of almost first down. Probably been a yard short there. Right. And Quite. instead now third and three, I believe no, well, no third and one. So he did get two. Carter Goodman was able to set the edge there. He wasn't able to make the initial tackle, but he slowed him down enough that Luke was able to come in and tackle him, keep him short of a first down. Big De third down for Dexter, third and one here. Late getting on the yeah. field for Sykes and out of position, and Farmer's going to pick up the first yeah. down and more. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's a big one for Dexter yeah, right there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You don't want to go three and out right after they just, just run it down there. You want to keep your offense on the field for a little while. Bobby, this may come down to uh, who's got the ball last. Here's Dexter. They are, they, they are going to have to take a timeout. Here. And oh. that's a personnel issue. The sub was – I saw the sub come on. Nobody ran off. And now – Oh, I, okay. I kept thinking, why would they call a timeout? Because they weren't guarding number three. He was wide open. But he, was he the 12th man? He was the 12th oh. man. Didn't come off. We're going to get a quick 30-second break in. We'll be back for more action. 10.04 left in the fourth. Does your business need uh, literally anything? When we founded CNS Cleaning Supply, our goal was simple. Become a one-stop shop for anything and everything your operation might want. From car care to condiments, mops to markers, soaps to staplers, and everything in between. Which is a lot. CNS has got you covered. Give Delane Beckwith a call at 573-217-0104. Or visit cscleaningsupply.com to get set up with, well, literally everything. Tell them Delane sent you. From personal chatting, checking to home and auto loans to debit cards and personal savings account, First State Community Bank provides all resources to Missouri communities near you. Hey, what, Bobby, you're reading our tagline really well. May have to put you to work. Well, but, you know, <laughs> you, you always listen to offers, but, you know, I've, I've, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. <laughs> I've been where I've at uh, since 03, so basically 19 years. Awesome. Well, good for and, you. Uh, I guess the fall of 22. Two here will be starting the 19th year. Yeah. But, um, boy, sneaking up on it. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm Spent telling my you. whole career in one place with one company, and, great and it's you. a great one. Yes, sir. Here's a hand that goes to Farmer. He'll get it upfield. No gain, really, for Dexter. Maybe it, a half yard if we're going to be nice about it. Interestingly, you and I talked about it earlier. Dexter had to call a special teams timeout early in the second half, and then they called that one. They only got one left. I, I don't know if that will be big coming down the stretch. But it certainly the, could be. The interesting thing about having to take that time out, that is right there in front of your right, bench. Right, and, and right, right. And you can't get that kid off the field. I yeah, mean, that, yeah. that is a problem. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that Again, talked about things being cleaned up. That's something you got to clean up for sure. There's obviously some miscommunication. Howard grabs that. Whoa. Makes a throw, and that's going to be a sack yeah. there, number 21, Clark. Again, again, you call that a coverage sack, Bobby. If you see that, I happen to be watching – he looked this way, and about the time he cocked his arm, the defensive back covered up that 
uh, receiver, and he pulled it back down, and it was too late at that point. They had already had the surge and were on top of him. Dexter now finds himself in a third and 15, and the clock is not their friend right now. It, it does not need to move very fast for Dexter at all. <laughs> they are down five. Sykeston has to do something here to get their uh, defense off the field here. Then I'd look for them to go into clock, burning clock mode. Howard rolls out, looks for somebody to uh -oh. throw it to, being pursued hard. That's going to be a tough one. He has taken wow, down hard. Nice tackle, too. I'm, that is Gadbury right there on the play, and he takes down Howard very hard. You, you, you can just feel mm -hmm. every bit of energy oozing out of Dexter right mm -hmm. now. Tell you what, Luke Gadbury, we've called his name a bunch tonight. Don't have the exact stats, but he's got to be closing in on double-digit tackles. I, I don't know the exact number, but and that might have been the old TFL there trying to get somebody off. We may have to call a timeout. Trying to, I think that is a freshman, Houston Neely, back to kick uh -oh. this ball. And he gets it off. Just get out of Decent the way. Kick. Just get out of the way. Just do That's not. That's going to take a Dexter bounce. And Dexter picks Man. that up. It's down at the 46-yard line. That's where Sykes will take over. We're going to take a 30-second 30 30 <laughs> break and be back. We don't want to take a 30 and miss this. <laughs> Back of the action here, Sykeston football. They've got a man in the backfield. He is taken up the middle and breaks free there. Got a couple. Got oh, he's, he may go. He has got one man to beat here, and it is taken oh. down by uh, Ryder Williams just inside the 20. Really nice tackle, too. He just about stripped it. He did a little strip tackle. Matt, all the signs are on the field right now. Dexter's cooked. Th that They had a chance to tackle him behind the line of scrimmage, had hands and arms on yeah. him, and nothing out of that. They've no. got to find some energy somewhere and some life. The he, crowd is dead, the yeah. sidelines are dead, and on the field is lifeless as well. He, he's a big kid. Uh, Sykes is going to be content here, probably use most of this play clock, burn this thing down. It'll get down close to seven minutes before they have to snap it. And I'm going to guess you're going to see a lot of doses of Keodric Sherrod. Well, as you say, that <laughs> five wide. <laughs> As I said. It's happened to us every time tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to stop. The middle, he's got outside now and cuts it out. That is Juarez on a tackle. I don't know if you noticed, uh, happened to see Joseph's front side, number 71 for Dexter. You talked about staying upfield. He got behind Joseph. He came in rushing real hard. Joseph just went the other way, and he, he took himself out of the play. I just happened to catch that out of my peripheral. Well, and right now for Dexter, Set the edge, you know, yeah. set your edges, pin that guy down. They've got a squeeze. There's no squeeze going on up front no. for Dexter. Take away those lanes. Make him kick out for linebackers to clean up. Yeah, that uh, that front line for Sykes and offensive line is doing a fantastic job. They're creating – they're running a lot between the tackles too. He'll go left side right here probably. Here it is. Sherrard bounces there, and there it is. Stood up immediately. Alford has him, and he's met by a bunch more Dexter Bearcats. You, you could see it there. The, the right end for Dexter was spread very wide. The hole, you could tell where it was going immediately. Yep, yep, yep. The uh, That rule changed a couple years ago, you know, where they now can get a push from their offensive linemen. That has changed it so much. You know, before they kind of stand him up and they blow it dead, but now they can run those big offensive linemen in behind there and just shove him five or six yards and pick up first downs, get him in the end zone. Again, just like we talked about, 13 seconds on the play clock. We're under six minutes, and Sykeston is just content to just milk this clock with Dexter, with, especially with only one timeout. Going we'll to have to hurry now. Gadbury in the backfield. That'll be Heckmeyer himself up the middle. Dexter piles on him, and he's taken down. Looks like he's got the first down. So first down, Sykeston moving and change again, and that the play will start close to five minutes, I would guess. Yeah. Sykeston's going to be able to milk it down. Sykeston now moves into the Young Real Estate Red Zone, prime real estate for scoring for all your real estate needs. Call Young. 
Yeah, they're going to they're going to just burn every second of this thing. It's sort of like the old uh well thought the clock. Why did it they're down to six seconds. They would have to hurry, and they do hurry the line. Yeah, but why don't they – they just now uh – -oh. It'll be a quick snap quarterback keeper, and Even he is May. up and taken down. Fumble oh, on a play. No. Did we get him? Uh-oh. Oh, they called him down. Th that ball was loose. That that yeah. was definitely on the ground. They call it loose. But what was interesting on that possession there, though, Bobby, the coaches were calling it, too. I was sitting here looking. They, the play clock was running, but they, they stopped the, the game clock. I bet they burned or kept 10 seconds on the cl game clock. Here's Heckemeyer. He tries yeah, to push. In. He does. Touchdown, Sykeston. Yeah. And wow. the icing's not on a cake, no, but, man, no. they have taken it out of the oven. Wow. Has Joseph scored just about every play, I believe, <laughs> on offense? Gerard, I believe, may have. Oh, it, that's it, right. It he, scored, he scored the one, but Joseph has scored the other four or whatever it is. A lot of action in that north end zone tonight. Mm -hmm. Most all of it. 43-32. Well, Sykeston actually let up the south end this third quarter. But <clears throat> a couple of bad miscues for Dexter. It's put them in this situation. You know, the, the fumbled punt, uh, the interceptions, and it is just piled on the Bearcats. Like Sykeston burned a timeout here, too. Quick score into six. Cubs, or excuse me, Cardinals are up 3 0. 3 0 Cardinals as they march toward the playoffs. Pujols yes. in pursuit of yes. uh, 700 home runs. Boy. You know, I had mixed emotions about me, Albert coming back this uh, year. You know, Bobby, he you read my money, mind. But read my mind. Maybe he didn't lead for the money. You know, I had a friend to tell me he felt like the real reason Pujols left was if you remember. Jose Akendo was looking for a managing job and did not get it. They passed yeah, on him, that's right. and Matheny got it. Not necessarily against Matheny, but it no. just felt like that. So I'm not sure there. You know, you don't want to throw accusations when you don't know, but that rumor was floated. Interesting note there yeah. of how good of friends the players were with Akendo. But yeah. nonetheless, yeah. Albert, come back for the final year, and, man, what I, a fun ride. I agree. I was um, – I just assume, and I, I'm a big golf fan too, and these guys taking the money, go to the other tour – just say it. Just say you're taking the money. I get it. but it, I have a hard time believing it's about the money because the contract he signed in Los Angeles after taxes. Oh, he netted way. Less. Exactly. I agree. So I agree. could be something to the yeah. uh, Akendo deal. Here he is well, Sykes and back, now. and now another substitution. You just come out of a timeout. How do you yeah, not know who's on the field? You gotta, there, there's got to be the 11 standing right there beside you. They'll take the extra point attempt yep. unless they pull a trickery out here. They're up 11. Up 11. And a false start, that would have made it 12. Oh, that's oh, against that's Dexter. So that's that's a dead ball foul. So I guess we'll scoot up just a little bit. Interesting note, though, Bobby. Um, good friend of mine, he's probably not watching tonight. His name is Brian Harper. He's from Sykeston. He uh, played in the Phillies organization for – he went to SEMO and pitched, really good pitcher. Played in the Phillies organization. And he said uh, sometimes with deals like that, the almost said the NFL, the MLBPA, the Players Association, will make you take that because then that brings everybody uh, their value up too. So there's probably some of all that in there regarding Albert, and uh, he took it. Um, I, for one, uh, wasn't super excited that he's back, but I'm I'm very glad he's back now. I'm glad I'm glad I was wrong. Hagemeyer gives it to Sherrard. He tries to push it in, and the play is stacked up by Dexter and. Mm. Touchdown, oh, he's it. in. So Late that's a two-point conversion there. How do, how do you let it go? You know, hooray for Sykes. And how do you let it go that long? It looks like the play is I, I, No, I, I'm with you 100%. That's why I kept thinking. I thought this is a – they stacked him up. I thought it was just going to be into the or the play and call him dead. But that's where you get into that change. If you remember, well, now used to there was a, there was a, a foul called or a penalty called for pushing from behind. Well, I've got a chance. I want to let you folks know next Friday night, September 9th, we will be in Kennett where the Indians will be hosting Sykeston at their homecoming in a battle between the Class 4 Bulldogs, who are ranked 40th in Class 4, and the Class 3 Indians, who have been ranked 11th in Class 3 and 70th overall Missouri. We will keep you updated on those things. You can go actually to the A-Corp Media Facebook page and get all the updates for the month of September, I believe, after Sykeston. 
We are back here in two weeks for East Prairie Dexter homecoming. Yeah. Uh, Dexter at New Madrid next weekend. So Dexter, you know, they got ho hopeful starting two and zero. Now they're looking at zero and two going into New Madrid, who is a very yeah, tough team. They're a really good team. Yeah, interestingly, uh, Sykeston had a home game and then three straight road games before they go back. Um, it's tough, but just part of it. Real quick, I, I, I see these guys out here. One interesting thing Coach Pulley did is being a young coach, first head coaching job, like I said, maybe 30 years old now. He got a bunch of guys that co that coached him to come help him coach. I thought that was a big move on his part. Smart play. Here's Graham. Gets it up past the 30 now, close to the 40-yard line. He's taken out at the 39. Nice return for Dexter. They are going to be in definitely a passing situation, yeah. needing to move the football. Trayvon Dukes has been that missile shot out of a cannon, and he missed the initial tackle but was able to get him corralled down. And uh, your number 22, glad, I'm glad to see him back on the field after being – Injured. It's, uh, I'm, I'm glad he's back out there. Yeah, Graham off now. Dexter has McDonald and pull him at the top of your screen. You have Juarez oh, and Ryder oh, Williams at the bottom. Dexter needs to move the football. 5.01 left. They are down 12. Juarez is in motion. Hand goes to him far side. He's going to cut it upfield. Follows the blocker well. That was Caden Lee, the blocker. That's a seven-yard gain for yeah. Quavez there. The clock is becoming an enemy for Dexter. Yeah, De Dexter's got to move faster. <laughs> got one of the coaches over here trying to yell instructions at Bo Riddle, number six, and he's, you no, know, it's hard to hear. There's a lot of noise down that way. You know, with the clock where it is, Dexter needs to have this yeah. play called and the they, next one ready to roll. Yeah, they, they need to have what what uh, I would term sense of urgency here. Here's Quavez again coming this side. This really time cuts it upfield. Well, didn't make up a tackle. Up to the 50 now. Pass to the 45, down to the 43-yard line is Quavez. Two runs in a row for one, and he yeah. made nice of both. He did. And you notice we're talking about late in this game, kind of getting fatigued and, uh, tackling high and not, not making tackles. Had a chance to stop him for maybe a loss or little or no gain. Dexter still, they're still burning that clock. I'm like you, I'm surprised they don't have a couple of them already called. They're 15 De seconds. Definitely need to be in a hurry up. Oh, those lines look like they were Here's teetering Robbins there. again in motion. Here is Howard, he's got it, looks left. Looks again, throws the ball over them, and that is oh. not a well, very well thrown ball there. Um, he just floated that out there. You could see in his mind that he's questioning this throw yeah, yeah. and picked off again. That was. Is that Craig again, his second of the yes, game? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, thought, I, I couldn't tell if it, I couldn't see the three or the two. Two is Isaiah Jimmer, Jimerson Patterson. Now that's Caden Craig. That's a big pick. That was. Uh, well, that? On, on that, it looks like Sykeston has sucked the rest of the helium out of Dexter's <laughs> balloon. I mean, th this one has gotten 45-32 Sykeston yeah. up, and they have really got Dexter reeling here. I would be very, very surprised, but I haven't been right all night, Bobby, but maybe I'll be right on this one. I'll be very surprised if Sykeston put this one in the air at all. Dexter needs a turnover in a bad kind of way. High snap goes to Sherrard up the middle. He has stood up by Dexter. That is Simpkins, I believe, the first man there. I think they're just as, as, as simple and as vanilla, I suppose, as a running play that we have. I would assume that what Coach Pulley or whoever's calling the plays would call and not get in a hurry. We're 25 seconds on the play clock, so this is going to be under three minutes before they snap this. Matt, is, is this kind of winds down? If you can, any updates on any more area games yeah, we've got the, in this last the, few minutes? I got a text that said that that score stream or whatever we were looking we, at. We will get this after this play as they will get ready to hike here. Six seconds down on the play clock. It seemed like it went down. Yeah, I've Snap, got. Here's Heckemeyer, gives it to Sherrard. Again, off uh -oh. right side, and he's got room to run up the sideline. First bounds. down and more. Don't go out. That's and he's got to get down, know the yeah. clock situation. Yeah. Again, back to the scores there real quick, man. Yeah, Bobby, the, the service is down. I'm getting scores from Oklahoma and Indiana. I don't know exactly what's going on here. I don't have any updates. I'm sorry. We will definitely pass on those scores because nobody listening really cares. But 
<laughs> what they do care about is the final uh, 251 left in this one. Yeah, that was you gotta you gotta almost just slide and stay in bounds on that one if you're a Sykeston. Don't you don't want to go down? Or excuse, uh oh, and that, we had and a that's flag. A, that's going to be a spot foul to move Sykeston back that far. Something happened way back. I'm guessing a false hold. start. What? That's a false start signal and. No, what's that? Crossed arms. What is that? He, he gave the motion start sign, false start, so that backed him up. Is that a false start? Is that not a dead ball? I, I'm not sure, but here's Heckemeyer. He's got it. Hands to his running back, Sherrard. Again, up the middle, stood up by a host of Bearcats, Alford, and looks like Coons in on that. And now we've got another Bearcat slow to get up. He is back to his feet. Landon Weathers, he looks to be okay. Third and 15. Again, I, I think you know, Sykes is going to two hands on the ball. Kennett winner tonight, 45-6. to six. So they roll as they will be yeah. preparing for Sykes to next week at their homecoming. They are a handful for sure. Going to be just over two minutes by the time this is snapped, probably with the play under two minutes. Dexter with one timeout. Dexter, they, they pack it up the middle. They try to get it. Luke Gadbury's Gadbury. got it outside, and here comes a flag. Comes a flag, yeah. Interesting to see, will Dexter take the flag or they just, deny? I was just thinking that that they if they take it, they give Sykes another play. It's third down again. They may just. I don't think you can if you're Dexter. You've no. got to gamble and say they're going to punt it on yeah. fourth. Minute 56 left. I'm with you. I guess they're looking at it. It would be half the distance, Ben. You can't back them up 10 right. inside the 10 there. So half the distance to go. They're going to back this football wow. up. Wow. That's very, very surprising. Because it would have been fourth and six. I don't know. Certainly. Yeah, and, and, and Sykeson is not going to give him field position. If I'm no. Sykeson, I'm kicking that ball away. Absolutely. I'm not going to give you a chance to get a field position. Absolutely. If I'm Dexter, I'm, I'm taking a chance they're going to kick that football. Well, if, if you can stop them on third here, which you should. Yeah, it's, uh, then you call timeout, I'm sure. Fourth down and hopefully block a punt maybe for Dexter. I'm not sure. Yeah, you're going to bring the house, I'm sure. You're going to have to sell out on something. Five wide now. Dexter surely will bring pressure. They do not. A rose near side, and he's just going to go down and yeah. surprisingly takes more hits than he yeah. should. Yeah. So Dexter gets a stop. Timeout. Yeah. Final timeout with the minute 37 down two possessions. That's a, it's a tall order, but it Folks, can it can be done if they. We're going to I'm slip sorry. in one yeah. last 30 second break here before we end this one. We'll be back in Dexter to finish it up here. If you feel like you never get the time you need with your insurance agent to find the right coverage, it might be time to make a change. Tyler Miller of Flatland Ag Insurance in Clarkton works to make sure each and every day that his clients feel they are taken care of. With years of experience in crop insurance in four states, he strives to provide you with the exact coverage you need for your specific situation. For more information, give Tyler a call at 573-276-8044. Here's to another great year. Real quick, as we have a chance here, Matt, I uh, want to thank the guys on the camera, uh, Josh, Matt, Dave, uh, or Brad, rather. You guys have been great for us tonight up here in the booth as well. Uh, Tori Peterson with us, Tyler Lasseter, uh, Andrew Moore. They brought the game to you on the cameras. We've just got to do the talking into the uh, mic. We got the easy part, don't we? It's been easy, but active. <laughs> so Dexter, <laughs> right here, they've got it fourth down and 25. If I'm Dexter, I'm selling out all the way to block this punt. See, they got Joseph back trying to block um, the up back to block one last where they get to the kicker. You got one back, ten rushing. You just want to get this one out of there. Chavez deep. Here comes Dexter. Do not get near. Oh. That's a short kick. Well, That's going to go. It's going to go look dead. At look at there. Look yeah. at the roll. Yeah. Yeah. Rose dead. Yeah, let the clock burn, they'll... too. That's the other side, too. Well, yeah, and as soon as the ball stops, he will blow it dead yes, so right. they can't waste it. So, going to change possessions here. Dexter almost had a chance. That ball hit just beyond the 30 and yeah. rolled all the way up near the 50. <laughs> right. So right. Bearcats need a quick strike, and Sykeson right now just needs a stop. Yeah, and the, the other issue we talked about, we, 
that it might become an issue is now Dexter's out of timeouts. So the only thing they can do is get out of bounds and or uh, clock stop on a first down. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. Little surprise on the cover of the Sykeson. Yeah, I'm figuring Probably he'd be a back. deeper prevent here, yeah. nothing over the top. Well, I'm not a huge fan of the prevent because sometimes you prevent a win, right? You oh. do, and there's going to be a sack, and yeah. that's going to. Oh, oh, he gets out of it. Oh, my gosh. What a, Howard trying to get well, to the sideline, can't do okay. it. Ended up not being. Uh oh, Caden Craig's down. Not sure what we got going on here. So a timeout on the field, folks. We're going to take a quick one as well. We'll be yeah. back here in 30 on the A-Court Media Networks. At Focus Bank, we believe in really free checking. What does that mean? Well, opening an account requires no more than $25 with no minimum balance requirements or monthly service charges. You'll also have access to online and mobile banking, online bill pay, direct deposits, mobile deposits, automatic payments, e-statements, a nationwide network of ATMs, and an instant issue debit card, all for free. Your first order of checks is on the house, and you'll also receive a complimentary thank you gift. Come visit us in Sykes and Charleston, Brothersville, or East Prairie. Focus Bank, simple, hassle-free checking that's really free. First Day Bank and Trust is more than just products and services. We're there for you for your first paycheck, buying a home, opening a small business, starting a family, or planning to retire, and everything in between. We're the local bank you know and trust for all of your financial needs. Visit fsbtrust.com or stop by your local First State Bank and Trust to explore all of your financial options. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Back in Dexter, that was just nothing more than cramp, so he's up and going. My good friend Ed Gargis just texted me and uh, let you know that he enjoys the broadcast. Got started in this uh, announcing with yes, he Ed, did. taught me a whole bunch, and, man, I just have a great admiration. And there is a wow. sack again by Sykeston. That is number 25, Dukes. He has been all over the field for Sykeston tonight. And he just finished off the icing on that cake for Sykeston. They are going to come into Dexter and take wow. their uh, home opener from them. It stands at 45-32 unless we see a major change in the last minute of this football game. Why is the clock stopped? What? Well, oh, the, ze ze hey. the zebras are having a discussion gotcha. here, so I that. we have to stop for grazing there and see what they come up with. Tell you, Ed, Ed is a fine, fine gentleman. I think a lot of him. Uh, did I say that out loud? Don't tell him I said that. Well, he heard it, so don't worry. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so a penalty goes against the Sykeston. Not sure what the penalty was. I, I saw him waving the arms, but here we come again. What in the world was that? What is that? You know, a sportsman like? Well, I, I don't know. That is a swimming motion. <laughs> I'm with you. I look like the breaststroke. Maybe they weren't supposed to do that now. I don't know. Here's Dexter trying to find something. Clock sits at a minute 01. Here we go. Reverse play to McDonald. He tries to cut it upfield. Oh, Breaks boy. a tackle there. Gets it up. He needs to get out of bounds in a hurry. And he cuts it back toward the field. Yep. He is taken out of bounds. Boy, wow. Sykeson just needs to stand him up and keep him in. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a miscue both ways. McDonald should have run it out of bounds, and Sykeson should have thrown him down in. Dexter moving the football, 52 seconds left. No timeouts, but we need a stance here just to uh, keep the clock running. Decent portion of the Dexter fan base has stayed. All of the Sykeston fan base has yeah. stayed. Trayvon limps off. Hopefully we've got another cramp, or just a cramp, I should say. I don't, I don't want him to get a cramp. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Here's Howard. He rolls this near side, throws it deep and short and picked off again. Wow. And smart play there by Sykeston go. taking a knee. Look at that. Hey. That's a senior for you right there. Yep. Take the knee. Didn't don't. try to do anything no. special. Well, I love the move. I do too. I mean, you fumble it. You don't know. You get a something crazy. Just just take the knee. Great. as Very, very smart. And as a senior, that's what your seniors do for you, or, or you hope they do. And, you know, something we had earlier, a score correction. Actually, last year's score was 11 to 9. This oh. one has been anything but. It's been 45 <laughs> to 32. Right, so, you know, right. You, you right. see the improvements on both teams. Because mm -hmm. I remember last game calling, last year calling the game. Was it? Dexter probably should have run away with that thing 30-something to maybe yes. 11, but could not finish drives. 
both teams have improved their offensive so I much agree. this year. So, you know, kudos to the coaches. Both of these coaches knew their programs. Dexter now falls 0-2, Sykeston 1-1. But Pulley in his second year, this is a big win for him. There's several folks, including myself, who thought Dexter was probably primed to win I, this listen, football Listen, I, I, I don't disagree at all. I had the, uh, very, very similar thoughts that Sykes would have their hands full. They did. Dexter came out and essentially punched them in the mouth. But the Bulldogs were able to withstand it, get back off the mat, and come back and just play a totally different second half. Well, folks, we watched this one click down. We are going to take a 30-second break. Matt's going to try to get his score stream back up and working. If we can give any updates, we will. We're going to take this one final back in 30 to update you on what's going on in the area. First State Community Bank has been named the number one bank in Missouri by Forbes, and we think they might be on to something. When it comes to banking, we've always said that people should come first, and we hold true to that idea. Opening an account has never been easier. You can even do it online. We want our community to thrive, and that's why we put it in our name. So come bank with the certified best at First State Community Bank, serving our community because it's who we are. Back in Dexter as Sykeston takes this one to the final, 45-32. Sykeston down 25-7 at the half and they did nothing but roar as Dexter could only find one touchdown mustard out of this second half. Matt, last week, Dexter went up 14-0 and then struggled around. It was 28-21 to going into the half. Dexter starts well. They've got to right now regroup as a team and say, hey, we're good enough to compete, but they've yeah. got to start to learn how to finish games off, and it starts with controlling the football a little bit better from them. No, I agree. Uh, Dexter, I, I, again, I'm certainly not their coach. I don't, I've never even seen them practice. They had so much success in that first half throwing the ball. And I know they tried to here late, but Sykeston was really ready for it. When you're up, you, you're like, okay, they got to come back. They got to pass the football. So there were some, some inter interceptions late. So you, you kind of, uh, you kind of see that, but I, I don't know. I, I was very surprised to see them try to pound it on the ground when they had so much success. Again, I'm not their coach. Uh, he knows what their strengths are, and maybe maybe he thought it was – sometimes I term it fool's gold. Maybe that's just what he thought it was. And uh, But Sykeson, did, a, in my opinion, did a great job, made some adjustments at halftime, seemed like they shored up the tackle other than that one drive where Dexter was able to get a couple big plays and picked up uh, a touchdown and kind of extended that lead. But Sykeson was able to shut it down, and that, that uh, tells me a lot. But you're right, Coach Pulley – we haven't touched on it a lot, and I know you guys have a new coach, and I, I think they're both – you want coaches that are winners. Your coach, Peter, Peterson? I'm, no, not Peterson. Uh, uh, Jamerson. Jamerson, thank you. Sorry about that, Coach. Coach Jamerson is a winner. He's Everywhere he's gone, there have been a winning program. He's going to bring that here. It, is it going to be this year? I don't know, but you guys got a good class coming. You know, same thing with Coach Pulley. He's two years in – excuse me, this is his second year. He's building something here, and I, I think both of these guys, period, are winners. Well, and you know, look at Dexter. I know of four turnovers tonight. Yes. Yep, I don't think Sykeson had any that I remember. Some bad plays, but I don't remember turnovers. I don't The either. score is indicative of the That's turnovers. Right. Sykeson comes away 45-32, you know, and as fine as a half, Howard had the first half. It was just as disastrous as the second. Couldn't find that groove and that magic he had. And um, kudos to Sykeson for making some adjustments. Yep. They stuck with the plays a little bit better. Coverage was there. They looked gassed and wore out right before the half. I, yeah, you, you half mentioned time, it. Man. Oh, they looked. They looked, you're right, absolutely gassed and worn out, and they were able to – they did get some pressure late. That, that You know, if you give that quarterback, regardless of, of whatever level you are, if you give the quarterback time to throw, they're going to pick you apart, and he can throw it. I mean, there's just no doubt. And, and you know, one thing I noticed for Sykeson tonight – they struggled running the football outside of Heckemeyer. Mm -hmm. If they're going to rely on their quarterback to run the football all night against Sykeston, it's going to be a short night for Sykeston yeah. because that score will be run up in a hurry. You, you can't just rely on your quarterback against a yeah. Kennett team. No. I mean, they will destroy it. So yeah. look for Sykeston to open up that offense. I don't remember a whole lot of completed passes tonight. That's a part of Sykeston's game they need desperately to compete and win football games like next week against Kennett. Absolutely. Kenneth. No, they, they, there were some completed passes last week. I, Joseph had a really good passing uh, night last week. I'm not sure 
you know, again, sometimes you have game plans and it goes differently. Coach Pulley and his staff took what was given them tonight, and Joseph was working. And like I said, it's going to be sweeter tonight, but he's going to sleep well. Man, oh, man, he's going to be tired. Yeah, so Dexter next week, they will be at New Madras as they roll into there. What a shootout we had last year. We covered that game here on a court media. Uh, I believe New Madrid pulled away 56 to 43 or 41 or so, I believe, on that one. That was a fun night here because we thought it was over and Dexter just wouldn't go away. Um, definitely going to be a little bit different of a feel because Dexter physically on defense is not the same team this year. You know, they're struggling right now on defense to find some things and really the running game. Dexter's yeah. doing well against the pass, but yeah. they cannot stop the run for anything right now. I figure that's going to be a focus of this week's practice coming up. I'm sure. They're, I hated to see the kids go out. I know they were uh, key components uh, for the team. Interestingly, we talked, you know, I, I started the broadcast talking about Dontrez Williams, and he was hurt. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. That was probably as much as anything not being able to throw it as much. He's a big 6'3", probably 6'4". He's an outstanding basketball player, but he's a super athlete, and he his he didn't have that tonight. He wasn't available for again. I I don't if if I knew I would tell you, but I I don't know, and uh, hopefully he'll be back next week because they're going to need him. Well, folks, as we get ready to wrap this one up here and turn out the lights in Dexter again, Sykeston walks away 45-32 over Dexter. Matt, I enjoyed you having yes, us sir. here on the uh, broadcast again. Yes, sir. A Court Media back in action next weekend, September 9th. At Kennett, that'll be the Sykeston Kennett football game, folks. I I will be in New Madrid watching my son. Wait, I'm not sure who's going to have the call. What, what's going on? No, well, you have to you have to stay with A Court Media. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, Bobby. Well, I love him, but I love my son more. <laughs> but and folks, I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as we've enjoyed bringing yeah. it to you. For Matt Tanner, myself. Good night from Dexter, Missouri.